Hello YouTube. I'm back on schedule again. It's Monday night, 16th of December 2019. Oh, it's nearly Christmas. Look at the tree. Oh, wow. Not that the tree looks that great with a honking great hole in it from my webcam overlay, but... Ah, oh, well, it's there. I made the effort. No, I didn't. That's not true. My partner made the effort. She did all of it. Oh, well. <laughs> Never mind. Somebody made the effort. That's what's important. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, let's have a little look at the fortress, shall we? Let's remind ourselves what little progress was made in the last stream, because as any of you who were there or who have seen the video recording thereof will know, it was pretty rough in terms of crashing. We had a shitload of full-blown failures, and as such, we need to be very diligent with our saving. Uh, one thing we did manage to do was get a few spikes around the edge of this corridor here, which uh, haven't been linked up to a lever yet, but we have placed one in preparation. There is one ready to be connected. Uh, also, there's this room here, which was done the session prior, and it was hooked up to a pressure plate, but we removed that, so that's no longer going to be involved in the process. I feel like for security purposes, just to make this trap corridor at least closer to a working form. We need to put some kind of um, drawbridge up here, something to close off this area, because if they can make it into here, there's a chance they can make it all the way around. Now, I did say floodgates earlier. I did have a little, well, quite an elaborate plan involving all sorts of floodgates and different switches to make it into different configurations, but I feel like if we keep it simple, then it's more likely to work, isn't it? So a single drawbridge is probably the most sensible option. And I think what we want to do, because we're not actually doing all of these um, uh, bottlenecks for the purposes of, uh, what are they called? Um, pressure plates. We can take these ones out at the end and just replace them with a little drawbridge. A little lift-uppy drawbridge that turns into a wall. That'll be nice, won't it? So we've designated those digging spots. That's good. Um, did anything else happen? Uh, we did that pit all thing, didn't we? Or did we do that, the strip all cage thing? I don't think we did that yet, did we? Does anyone remember the command? Does anybody remember what I was supposed to type in? It was something like strip all caged, or... I wonder if it's uh, in my DF hack history. Quick save, GUI stamper. Oh, yes, that's important. Quick save, die, die, export legends. No, we didn't do it, apparently. Or at least he didn't save after doing it. Oh well, I'm sure someone will pop into chat who knows what they're doing, and they'll let me know how to do this. They'll let me know what I need to do to get uh, all of these lovely goblins I've captured stripped of their goblinite. By the way, I forgot to do this before we started recording, so uh, I better do it now. If any of you happen to be in the Tacoma area of Washington State, United States of America, you may be interested in visiting Tacoma Games. They sell tabletop role-playing games, collectible card games, board games, polyhedral dice, etc, etc, etc. If that's your kind of thing, head over there. Tell them I sent you. Might be nice, mightn't it? Who knows what will happen? Oh, excuse me. So, we don't have the command for strip all caged animals of their goods, but... I say animals. Goblins. Goblins are... I suppose they're animals, aren't they? I mean, I suppose all, all living creatures really are animals, right? We've also got a shitload of beak dogs in there. We're going to need to start dumping them in the magma as soon as we've got their equipment off of them. Do the beak dogs, I wonder, have any equipment? If they don't have equipment, then we can just start flinging them in immediately. Just get rid of them. Sizzle, sizzle. Um, you know steam for the uh, for the Magma King. What was his name? Ogdor? Oglin? Let's look at his statue. I know this is actually a statue of the correct god. Um, where is it? Uh, how do I look at it? It doesn't say, does it? Ah, here we go. Granite statue of Astra. Wait a minute. That's not the guy. Hang on a minute. What's going on here? This is a well-crafted granite statue of Ustra Tongzabi. The item is a well-designed image of Ustra Tongzabi, the elf, and Onget the aquamarine fountains. Oh, whew. The deity of the volcano's fire, metals, and minerals, depicted as a male dwarf in granite by Tekud Fikudatl. Ustra Tongzabi is embracing Onget the aquamarine fountains. 
The artwork relates to the belief of the elf Ustra Tongzavi in Ungut the Aquamarine Fountains in 337. Holy shit. This whole fucking temple has been an absolute fraud. Okay, it needs replacing. We don't want to remove it immediately because it might cause a stir. People, Maybe it's a small elf on the thing and it's not really the main feature. Maybe it's mostly the god and there's a little tiny elf somewhere engraved on it that can be hidden from the public. If we keep this covered up, it shouldn't cause too much of a stir. I'm going to immediately go and make an order for some statues. And they need all to be of uh, that lad. Statue. Okay. Uh, rock statues, please. Thank you. There we go. I want those. How many do I want? I'm going to order ten statues. There we go. Uh, coincidentally, someone was mentioning this. I think it was Master Nater in the uh, Discord just a moment ago. He was saying I should put more statues in, but I think what I want to do is make ten candidate statues of the god, check them for elves, and then we'll pick the replacement statue, and we'll unveil it in some kind of ceremony. Uh, D for details, but I've got to go to the right order first. Specify image. Sure. Let's do that. Uh, historical figure, I think that's... Uh, and his name was Ongit, wasn't it? F-O-N-G-E-T. Here we go. He's in here. He's one of the Ongits. Uh, he's got a much longer name than the others, so maybe we'll... Uh... Oh, he can't page up and down. Let's keep going. In fact, let's go from the top to the bottom there. That's not him. Ongit the Fainted... Ah, oh, here we go. On get the aquamarine fountains. There we go. Right, we're going to cut ten statues of him and see what that looks like. Fuzzy Logic should be on the case with this one pretty quickly. He is our uh, legendary uh, dwarven stonemason. So let's unpause this and see if we can get this blasphemy sorted out. Hello, Plutonium Jesus, by the way. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us. And uh, Cosmo Obus. Cosmo. Cosmobus? Cosmo Zero Bus? Let's call you Cosmo for now, and then we'll get the definitive answer in chat. How experienced are you? Do you need any backseating? Don't feel shy about backseating. I may not take your advice. Uh, I may, uh, but I'm quite happy to have people voice their opinions on what I should or shouldn't be doing. I have been playing Dwarf Fortress for quite a while, but I'm nowhere near as good as you'd think someone would be having played it for about 10 years or so. So, <laughs> you know, you'll see, you'll see. I'm not great at Dwarf Fortress, but I can make a fortress last a little bit. We are having serious crash issues at the moment, so I do need to uh, be very diligent with my quick saving. But we'll do it after something interesting happens. Let's just press J and M to check how the orders are coming along. They've been validated. The statue's in the queue. You know what? I think what I need to do is make that maximum priority, because currently there are unbelievable blasphemous images in our fortress right this needs to be removed and and quick there we go somebody get that fucking thing out of there i can't believe we've made a fucking temple to a volcano god and the statue that we've created for it has him cuddling an elf i mean that is not acceptable in any way shape or form this should be oh thank you very much for the follow much appreciated um this really should not be uh happening Ah, migrants. Great. Uh, let's watch them flood onto the edge of the map. Oh, they're not actually flooding from... Where are they coming from? Why did it zoom to here? Normally it zooms to where they're... Oh, is that not actually the migrants? Oh, no, the migrants are coming from the left. That's just the parade of people coming to and from the river. We really need to get some of that water inside so we can build some wells. Once that's in there, things are going to get significantly easier. I also need to stop dwarves from fishing so much. What are they doing out here? Is that what they're doing? They are. They're creating tons of fish. You're out here, Fuzzy. What are you doing by the river? Take me to the river. Wash me down. As they say in that that thing. What's it called? The Commitments? That's the one. Mm. It sees that uh, Butternut Squash is churning out lots of spikes. That's good. We should have enough to fill the corridor within a few years. It'll be nice. Uh, the sponges are going to come and swallow him whole. Oh, I hope we don't have any sponge issues. I have yet to encounter a sponge in Dwarf Fortress. Are they, from the way you're talking about them in chat, I, I 
would assume that they're more dangerous than one would expect. What, what do you what do you say? Are they? Why is this guy carrying a bloody anvil? He was just carrying an anvil. Oh God! Don't question it, scoundrel. They're dwarves. They do what they want. Okay, we've built one of the statues. That's good. That's good. Okay, one of the statues has been built. We'll give it a few more minutes. Let the candidate statues be finished, and then we'll take a look at them. Oh, a chicken's been marked for slaughter. That's nice. It's going to be tasty. Uh, drinking. They could be drinking down by the walls. That's a good point. We haven't really nailed the, the booze situation. I should start collecting some fruit from the trees out here and make some step ladders because using that auto cutter, we've managed to tell them to cut down anything that doesn't bear fruit or nuts. That was a question we asked in chat earlier on, but no one managed to get an answer to. Is there any form of booze? made from, like, distilled or brewed or fermented from nuts. I'd be interested to know. I couldn't think of any. I know there's ones that have got nuts in, like amaretto and... That's, that's all I can think of. But there must be other drinks, right? There must be. It looks like our miners haven't made it up here yet to widen the corridor. That's okay. That's okay. They're busy down by the... Uh, by the dining hall, I'd imagine. Sorry, not the dining hall, the uh, the bedroom floor. That was all set up nicely. Who is this? There's a creature over here. Let's have a little peek. It's just a porcupine. Nothing to worry about. Or are porcupines something to worry about, I wonder? Hmm. Giant sponges consume dwarves whole. Good lord. That's um, not what you'd expect. That's not what I would expect at all. I would imagine a much more passive creature. Something perhaps anchored to a rock or floating through the ocean, absorbing plankton and stuff like that. And krill, maybe. No, not krill. Krill are too, uh, too vigorous. They're like little shrimp, aren't they? Anyway, uh, what type of nuts? Any type of nuts. Can you think of a, a drink that has is primarily the alcohol is made from nuts? I mean, sure, I could Google this right now, but I'm playing Dwarf Fortress. A peanut colada. Mmm. Mmm. That does sound like it would contain nuts, but I'm not sure that you've got the, na the name perfectly down on that one. You might have got that one a little bit wrong. <laughs> but, but yes, that does sound like it would contain booze. However, even the pina colada doesn't actually... It, you know, it's got regular standard booze in it, isn't it? Like, um, what is the alcohol in a pina colada? Vodka? Malibu. Has anyone ever had Malibu, the coconut flavoured booze? It's not bad. I used to work in a working men's club and they had uh, a wide variety of uh, liqueurs behind the bar. It was very interesting. I don't know why I always took a half pint when I went got offered a, a drink by one of the people buying, a, buying at the bar. I should have always gone for one of the more exotic spirits, shouldn't I? Oh well, never mind. Hello Dragon Man B. Uh, the crashes so far have been zero. So, you know what? I'm going to check to see if these statues are on the way. Half of them are made. I feel like it's a good time to do a quick save. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to pause briefly. We're going to alt-tab over to Dwarf DF Hack. Not that you can see that. And I'm going to press the up arrow and do a cheeky quick save. A nice little cheeky quick save just to make sure our progress is saved, even in the face of continual crashing. <coughs> rum! That's what Malibu was. Rum. Yes, I remember that. Actually, not too bad. Uh, Cosmobus says, I don't believe there are any nut-derived drinks that is not of the non-sexual kind. I see, I see. Are there any sort of... And I mean, obviously, drinkable. I understand that part of it. But um, are there any drinks that are, even in fiction, canonically composed of, you know, booze and spooge? Is that a thing? <laughs> are there any... I can't think of anything. I've never heard of a, a, a spunky cocktail, so to speak. Then again, then again, if the game Soggy Biscuit actually exists and is not just an urban legend, uh, then perhaps, perhaps a spunky gin does exist or something like that. Um, where are we? Coconut wine. I, I, you know what? I do like a good fruit wine. I used to go to a lot of LARP events and uh, I would always enjoy purchasing a bottle of some kind of elderflower or cherry or something not grape wine. And I'd, I'd probably drink about two or three bottles in a night, which is not a good idea. I would not encourage you to follow me in that. <laughs> but um, 
you know, at the time, it seemed like a wonderful idea. Uh, okay, so the save is done. Uh, we can unpause again, and we're just going to give them enough time to build five more statues. Or am I? Am I going to start designating more spikes? I feel like we could designate another tranche of spikes, couldn't we? Let's do this. Let's do this. We've just done a save. We're riding high. We can do this. Uh, so, trap components, T. And then we go down the list to the upright spear spikes. And then we start bunging them in the corridor in their tens. Ashen spikes. Very nice. Uh, and we go enter. We pop one here. Ashen spikes. Also very nice. I like it. Then we can pop one down here. Maple spikes. Mm, very Canadian. Uh, that's D for accept. I will check what that was in chat that somebody said. But just let me, just let me get these spikes down. Let's make a little bit of progress. Just a tiny bit. Just enough to uh, keep the wolves from the door. Uh, is that? That's it. That's good. Uh, let's put another one in here. Bircham, Plumwood, Wagonwood. Oh my goodness. And Ashen. More Ashen Spikes. That's good. Uh, D to commit to. Uh, enter again. Pop one in there. Ashen Spikes again. Easy peasy. Uh, enter. Let's put one here. Maple Spikes again. Uh, ashen Spikes. Applewood Spikes. Ah, good. We can't put that in. Fantastic. Just the right number to finish off another trap. Good. Lovely. Fantartly dartly. Uh, ooh! Nish Abel Osek, the metal crafter, is taken by a fey mood. Let us follow him. Let us see what he does. Um, where is that little flashing telltale... Is that it there? There he is. Nish. Let's follow him and see where he goes. Come on, Nish. Show us the way. He's going down. Ooh, he's claimed a magma forge. Very nice. He's no longer being followed for some reason. Thankfully, we have whatever ingredients he's looking for. Some kind of metal bars. And then something else. Where is he going now? Ooh. Out of the fortress. Interesting. Something in the corpse pile at the gate? No, he's heading up the mountainside. Wow. What? Oh, some random piece of wood on the side of the mountain. For goodness sake, sir. Could you please not be so prepage? Thank you. While he's doing that, I'll have a little cheeky cheeky, cheeky look at chat and see what's going on. Uh, you have the most posh Manchester-esque accent. Manchester? I'm right at the other end of the country. <laughs> I'm like almost on the south coast. Well, actually, not really. I'm almost in London. But London's pretty big. Um... I meant in Dwarf Fortress, there are several in real life. Don't believe there are any nut-based drinks. Oh, I see, I see. Um, did you have an aquifer on this? No, Master Nathan, no aquifer. Which is uh, not ideal for getting the water into the fortress. He's still moving, that means he's still getting ingredients. It's all good. Uh, I was thinking you could use the coconut water, but it seems coconut wine is made from the sap. Oh, okay, so it's not actually made from the nuts. Nuts of protein. Ah, uh, okay. So Fuzzy Logic pointing out there that nuts don't really contain that much sugar. How about, are there any sweet nuts? Are macadamia nuts sweet? Maybe if you put nuts and sugar in. No, I think it's a, it's a lost, it's a lost, uh, a lost call. I don't think we're ever going to be able to make alcohol with our nuts. He's begun his construction. Fantastic. I think we'll take the completion of his construction as the next milestone to quick save. I'm also going to have a little cheeky check and see if we've got any of those. Oh, one left to be built. Soon we'll be able to replace the blasphemous statuary in our temple. In fact, this needs to be dumped and cast out. Um, D for dump. There we go. Goodbye. Please do not bring back. Oh shit, they're going to take it down to that um, dump that I designated downstairs, aren't they? Ah, sorry, it doesn't matter. We've got 11 idlers, someone will get on the case. Right, surely they've built these statues now. Nope, still got one statue to go. We should see a notification at the bottom. Hello, we can't... Oh, hang on, we've run out of cages for loading the cage traps. Uh, let's uh, quickly order up some more cages. Cage. 
Uh, iron? No, thank you. That seems like a massive waste of resources. Let's just make wooden cages. And I would say we're going to need another 50. Let's just crank those bad boys out until we can't crank any more. Okay. No one's moving the old statue. I'm going to take a quick survey of the waterworks and see if any of the construction has begun. No, the channeling hasn't even started. Let's have a quick peek at the bedroom floor, see how the miners are going. Um, there we go. Oh shit, they've still got tons to do. They've barely touched it. In fact, where are they? Are they even... Are they even dig? Do they even am? Where are they? They must be digging somewhere else. Hopefully, they'll be going for the uh, the surface level stuff. Or well, they could be digging out this? No. Hmm. Wow. Interesting. Anyway, let's build a statue. Oh, hello. It's finished. Nish Abelosek Losek Lolosek, the metal crafter, has created Stizashelis, a steel crown. She offers it to Cryptbeards. She used some of my fucking steel. This is not good. This is not excellent. Let's take a look at our lovely collection of artifacts. Um, Beguiler Clearing, The Fondled Friends, a bonds bronze bow. Oh, that's been in the fortress for a while, that one. Uh, the Great Forest, uh, Skull Skindles, The Fatal Starvation, Large Dwarf Bone Greaves. I like it. That wasn't brought... We didn't make that, did we? That wasn't made in the fortress. Somebody brought that here. Probably came off of a goblin, to be honest. There's that steel warhammer we've had for ages. There's the lovely pregnancy, the first item actually created in our fortress. I say item, legendary item. Uh, the Butcher of Beaches. We've had a little bit of uh, single gauntlet shenanigans going on as well. I don't know why we've been keeping getting them. Uh, Ture Laments. Learned Grooves. A dog leather buckler. Is that what just got built? No, it's not. Here we go. Dyra Amulet. Steel Crown. Here we go. Kindle Thinned. It's worth 99 grand. Eh, it's good. It's all right. <coughs> this is a steel crown. All Crafts Dwarfship is of the highest quality. It is encircled with bands of steel and ash. This object menaces with spikes of clear garnet. On the item is an image of trillion-cut gems in white jade. Hmm. Uh, it's not the most exciting item we've ever seen, but at least it's an item, and he's going to feel jolly pleased that he's made it, no doubt. Uh, back up to the surface again. Now we can place the statue. Build. Statue. Let's look for a specific statue. Pressing X. There we go. So, what is this? Ngu, Muth, Mink, Giz, Atu, Lafo, Laf, Kixi, Uzbu. These had better not all be of dwarves with elves. This is. Uh, Nguzlu, Cruel, Bristled. Okay, it's not actually of the person we requested, which worries me. This is an exceptional diorite statue of Ungusu Cruel Bristled. The item is an exceptionally designed image of Ungusu Cruel Bristled the Goblin and Ongwet the Aquamine, Aquamarine Fountains. The deity of volcanoes, fire, metals, and minerals, depicted as a male dwarf in diorite by Fuzzy Logic Kolkalan, Ungusu Cruel. Unglusslu Cruel Bristled, I fucking hate these names, is embracing Onget the Aquamarine Fountains. The artwork relates to the belief of the goblin Unglusu Cruel Bristled in Onget the Aquamarine Fountains. Okay, so it's a step up from an elf embracing our volcano god, but what the hell? Goblins? Okay. Um, Muff sounds also like a goblin name. What is going on here? Let's press V again, take a little look. Press V again. This is an exceptional daysite statue of Muthcat Worksbeaks. The item is an exceptionally designed image of Muthcat Worksbeaks the Dwarf and Ongit the Aquamarine Fountains, the deity of volcanoes, fire, metals, and minerals, depicted as a male dwarf in daykite. Daysite? Daykite? Whatever. Fuzzy logic, blah blah blah. This looks like the statue. This looks like the one. I don't want to go too deep down this rabbit hole of finding out what a terrible... terrible elf lover my... Uh, so far favourite god is. There we go. That one's going in. And um, maybe we'll place the other ones in a sort of separate garden of statuary? No, we'll leave them for now. We'll check them out later on and place them. However, we haven't done the quick save that I promised we would. So let's quickly go over there and make sure we prevent any tears from the next crash. The next inevitable crashing. 
Let's take a look back at chat and see what's going on in there. Do they even do? I don't know, Cosmobus. Do they even do? Or am they even are? Uh, I'm flying tomorrow. Just measured the weight of my bag. It was 48 kilograms. <laughs> Way over. Then I thought I was very strong. Then I realised it was pounds. Oh, okay. So you, you picked it up and went, this doesn't feel like 48 kilograms. That would be heavy. I would. I think I would have difficulty lifting 48 kilograms. I might be able to do it. I don't even know how much I weigh. Well, fuck me bandy with a baseball bat. Look at that. Right in the middle of the save, it decides to shit itself yet again. Dwarf Fortress, come on now. Do you even fort, bro? Let's try playing Dwarf Fortress again. Let's deny reloading Dwarf Therapist, because that's already open. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see what's going on, and then get back into the action. Oh, fuck. That means our statue's not there, and also, I think our mood item is gone, which means it may be replaced, relegated to yet another parallel tangent world, which obviously can't exist, because tangents have to touch and parallel can't. Uh, let's unpause, take a look down here. The statue's been moved, but not dumped. Let's look at how many have been made. Uh, five. Okay, I'm going to cancel that order because we know a good one turned up like second place. Build statue. We're going to place it right. Where are we placing it? Here. That's it. We're going to look for the good one. Is it Muth? Is that the one? Muthman? Uh, yes, there we go. Muthcat work speaks. Uh, if anyone in chat has access to the legends file, feel free to take a little look at who this cat is. I'd be interested to know. Crashes meh indeed. Now, uh, we've done that. Did we get our item? Just going to check that. Um, nope. Nope, the crown has not been made. That's been basically undone. Ah, oh, we didn't place any of those spikes either. I'll tell you what. We'll zoom in a bit. We'll place some spikes. And then we'll quick save. How does that sound? Sound good to you guys? I mean, it feels good to me. Build, trap components, vertical spear slash spikes, and bingo. In they go. Menacing ashen spikes. Hooray! Oh, God. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. There we go. Enter. Maple spikes. Sure. Uh, we can do a few more. I don't want to go too crazy because we may invest too much time and end up not being able to actually recoup our effort in successes. Uh, come on. Place one more set of ten. Uh, willow and birch spikes. Surely willow spikes are not that bothersome. Sort of all wispy and wobbly. I suppose you could make them out of the trunk of the willow tree. That makes sense. They, also, they make cricket bats out of willow, don't they? Willow! Willow! Uh, where were we? That was it. We're pausing and we're going to save. That's what we're doing. We're going to do a quick save. Bosh. It's going. It's going. I'm also going to connect with Dwarf Therapist and see what's going on there. Type his name. I'll do it. Uh, okay, bear with me one moment. Let's look up this lad's name. Oh, we can't. <laughs> We've got to wait. We've got to wait. We've got to find him. We've got to find him. He's going to be somewhere. Cuddle in our volcano guard. Come on, save. Take hold. Don't give up. You can do it. You can do it. You're a big dwarf fortress, a brave dwarf fortress, a clever dwarf fortress, a beautiful dwarf fortress. Come on. Come on. You've got the power. You've got the touch. You've got the power. You can do it. You're going to save. Come on. Do it for me, baby. Do it for me. There's the last of my drink gone. I have to get up and get another one in a little while. But not while it's saving. Not like even 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 the chance that it could crash, I can't leave it. There we go. Good. Progress nailed down. Uh, although for some reason the window has gone out of focus. There we go. Let's get that progress in. Let's uh, get that statue done. They've removed the other one. That's good. Now, I think what we need to do is prioritize the water hole, right? We're probably going to be getting goblins pretty soon. Did we save after that migration wave turned up? 
There's a question. Did they... Uh, what the hell is someone shooting a donkey? Let's have a quick look at that. What is it? It's a wild boar. Carry on. Carry on a wayward dwarf. You're gonna kill some tasty pork. Sorry, that took too long. Too much of a delay. It would have been okay if I'd managed to do it all the way. But no, not at all. Ah... <sighs> 89 dwarves, apparently, according to Dwarf Therapist, which suggests to me that that migration wave didn't get saved, did it? Tragic. Truly tragic. Um, should we put more orders in for floor up here? <gasps> They've removed that piece of granite floor. Um, let's just make sure that's the case. Nope, it's still fucking there. Constructed floor. Granite block floor. Plus remove. Have no nud for. <clears throat> What's that all about? Why is no one taking it down? <sighs> Whatever. Uh, build C floor. There we go. F. And then if we go... Uh, cuck, 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 cuck. That'll make it as big as we can. Pop it in there. And we're going to make it out of granite... No, not granite blocks. Obviously not. This is all made of wood, isn't it? Let's make it out of... What are the closest blocks? Plumwood logs. Why not? And then applewood logs. Sure. Iron bars. No, fuck off. Uh, ash logs. Sure, we'll use some of them. What? Did that successfully fill up? Is that what happened? Looks like it. Sure, we'll accept it. <clears throat> we'll be okay with the fact that that just happened. Ah, okay. We're low on cages. Did I put orders in for cages before it was uh, crashing? No, I did not. So, uh, Q, C, A, G, E. And then we want a wooden cage. There we go. Please bring me 50, as I asked for before. Lovely. Okay. Be interesting to see if we do get another moodable dwarf. If we do, I'll save immediately, as soon as we get the mood. Excuse me. That way, if it crashes, we can remember that we'll, that we'll actually have the mood underway. And hopefully get the same item. Now there are two statues. One of them has it, the, the god cuddling a dwarf, and the other one has the god cuddling an elf. I am not happy with the elf one. Doesn't look like it's being dumped, so let's put that order in. There we go. Goodbye, elf cuddling statue. That is absolute heresy. We cannot have those images tainting our religion, our beautiful, beautiful volcano religion. Maybe we should look at what other temples we could build. I could dig off a little annex for another for another another deity, right? Couldn't I? Although building our temples in the area where the walls have soil in them is a bit meh. I mean, the opening of a volcano is a natural sacred site, and soil in the walls is just something that can't be avoided. But, you know, if you're constructing a temple to some other deity, it seems a bit lame to, you know, have soil in the walls. Let's go down a bit and see if we can find anything interesting down below. I've just seen a miner leaving the bedroom floor. <sighs> I may have put a bit too much of that in in one go. feel like I've uh, done a boo-boo. Bit of a blunder. Hello, Vizek. Welcome back. Dwarves, do dwarves not fall into the lava constantly? No, apparently dwarves are quite good without handrails, provided no combat is going on. If there's any combat, that's uh, big time trouble for dwarves. Uh, the religion on cursing wrongdoers. Is that what this religion's all about? The volcano one? Or... No, 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 no. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. We're all going to get cursed anyway, because that statue, if it gets pushed over, it's going to entail all sorts of cursory and it might fall over into the magma which may even add an extra layer of curse i don't know is destroying a statue worse than toppling it who knows who knows i don't want to add any more digging designations because we very definitely overdone it when it comes to the bedrooms i saw the new tool and i went mad with power mind you ever this side is almost done but it's just over this side that's presenting quite a bit of uh, trouble. You know what I might do actually? D X. If we take away this designation and yeah, leave the rest that should 
I mean, they leave this till later on when I expose the rock. It's annoying that this is so intricate and all at priority one, because I would like to be able to move it down a priority so they go and do the system first. Ah, uh, disaster. Disaster. Onget does like his curses. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. True worships of the volcano will throw themselves into the volcano. Oh, yeah, but you've got to get other people in first. If there's a big load of people and only a few of them want to chuck themselves into the volcano, it's their duty to chuck everybody else into the volcano because they're not going to chuck themselves in, are they? Speaking of which, we do need to get these goblins in. Does anybody remember the DF hack command for stripping all the armour off goblins? All of our caged enemies? Because I don't remember actually getting the order in. We've nearly got more of this covered up so we can actually put more workspace down here, which will be very handy. At the moment, we're a bit cramped. Just having the one Magma Forge feels a bit meh. I'd like to have a few so we've got a bit of uh, throughput, so to speak. Uh, there's still a dead dog lying in the hallway. I don't know why they haven't moved that. Oh, sorry, a dead, a stray puppy mangled corpse. I do apologise. If only I'd known it was a puppy's mangled corpse and not a full-grown dog, I would have been more clear. Ah, we need to get them to dig out the bloody graveyard as well. Look, that's being abandoned in favour of the bedroom complex. Should I just mass cancel some of these diggeroos? They are ripping through the rooms pretty rapidly. And maybe if we could find a few peasants in the fortress, we could just enable mining on them, because they do have picks in excess. Uh... I tell you what, let's do that. Let's pause the action here. In fact, let's not just pause the action. Let's quick save while we're at it. How about that? And then while we're quick saving, we can go and have a little look in Dwarf Therapist. Now, as you all know, Dwarf Therapist is a primarily white screen. So before we go there, those of you in darkened rooms or little caves or whatever, you might want to squint a bit and protect your eyes because there's a significant chance that they'll sting if you don't take precautions. Right, there goes the quick save. It's starting now. And over we go to Dwarf Therapo. Da -da -da -da. I'll also do a refresh just to make sure we've got the latest up-to-date population figures. And we shall sort by um, Migration Wave, just to check to see what the last one was. Uh, spring of the year 1054. That's really quite recent. Anybody exciting in there? Uh, a level 15 boa. Could be useful. Uh, that's all we've got in terms of raw labour. Let's have a look at their military power. Excuse me. How many kills is that? 376. Maybe more if it's gone off the edge. Five notable kills. Uh, a cougar man. A wolf man. A giant dingo. A cougar. And another cougar. And then 371 kills. 40 ravens, 34 wild boars, 34 giant mosquitoes, 34 great horned owls, 34 musk oxen, 34 kakapos. This lad's absolutely bonkers. What has he got here? He's got level 10 spear dwarf, level 10 discipline, and level 10 dodging with level 10 shield user and armor. Oh my goodness. Agog Asob... Slapped racks, the foggy flayer of bells. Well, I mean, let's get this bad boy in the military. Let's get him in there. What was his name? Aesob Sezercled. Okay, let's do it through the actual uh, Dwarf Fortress military screen. Where is he? The Lances of Gilding. I'm sorry, Mistum. You can't be the militia commander anymore. You've been supplanted. Uh, we now have someone far, far more qualified. Uh, where is he? What's his name again? Aesob. Let's do a Q search. Oh, don't type the word search in, you fucking tit scoundrel. Aesob. There he is. Aesob says called... That's the guy. That's him. He's an absolute legend. We've got to get him a spear. I think we've got a silver one knocking around that we can give him. Uh, let's come out of here now, and then I'll go back to Therapist. Brace your eyeballs. Are you ready? Strip caged all. Uh, yes, that could be it. Let's have a little look at that. Let's try that, shall we? While we're here. I'll go over to Dwarf, uh, dwarf Hack. Strip caged. 
space all. Aha, dumped 500 items in 36 cages. Fantastic. Looks like it's worked. Um, the save has been completed, so I should have probably done that before the save, but fingers crossed we remember to do it if it does crash. Right, back to therapist. Brace your eyeballs. Here we go, we're back in Dwarf Therapist now. Um, so, this he's turned out to be quite the catch. What an amazing dwarf. Asob, 117 years old. He's a potash maker. Potash maker, my ass. This guy's an absolute fucking combat legend. And I thought, here we have a vampire. I immediately assumed, turns out, no, he's done all of those kills with dwarvy spears. A spear isn't the most dwarvish weapon, but we can't argue. When someone this good falls into your lap, they just have to be your, they have to be your military lad. Let's check out who came with him. This guy's got two kills, uh, a porcupine and a rabbit, not nearly as impressive. And this guy, Lolo, has killed uh, a goblin. Well, looks like you're going in the military too with what little experience you have. Uh, he's got no skills, but what the hell? In you go. You've already bloodied your hands. I think you'll do well. Uh, he's going into the Lances of Gilding, which now has four members. Very exciting. Um, let's have a little look, see if we can see anybody else. Aesop here is an axe dwarf. Competent, not particularly good. What do you do in the fortress otherwise, Aesop? Are you a... Uh... Wait, the other guy's called Aesop as well. What is it about people called Aesop? He's a stone detailer, and that is it. Sorry, Aesop, you're going in the military. You're going to learn how to use a spear pretty well by the looks of things, though, so I wouldn't get too upset. There we go. Lances of Gilding. Commit. If only it were the Lances of Gelding, eh? If only. Oh, my favourite Dwarf Fortress song in the background as well. This is a good sign. Back to the military screen. Do we want to put a knife user in the military? He's killed three wild boars and a porcupine with his knife, but to be honest, I don't think we have any knives knocking around, so we're not going to get him just yet. A lasher. Now, I'm told lashers are pretty damn good if you can give them silver whips. And we may have one in loot. So I'll take a look and see what else he does. If he's, if he's like, okay to go in the military. Fisher Dwarf? Pfft, not anymore, mate. Sorry. I hope that wasn't your hobby as well as your, uh, as your livelihood. What's this skill? Shearing. No, you won't be doing any of that. All of our llamas were killed. Shearing is the least of our requirements. Where's he gone? Where's Asob gone? Oh, wait, he wasn't called Asob. What's he called? Udil. Okay, we already put Asob in. Assigned to squad, the Lances of Gilding. Here we go. Commit once again. How many people in the Lances of Gilding now? I think five. That's half a squad. Have another quick cast of the old eyeballs across. Here we go. Who's Kogan? A competent pikeman. Do we have any pikes? I don't think we do. That Mace Dwarf is a noble. He can't be going in. This guy... Macho's not a noble. Let's have a look at him. He's a competent Mace Man. What do you do in the fortress otherwise, Macho? What are your day-to-day -day dealings here? Ah, he's not actually a citizen. He's non-recruitable. Oh well. The dream was beautiful while it lasted. Uh, and that's it. That's all of our halfway decent and one fantastic dwarves. Okay, so let's go back and look at our military, shall we? Let's take a little peek on the military screen. So the Oceanic Ropes, of course, is currently vacant because that's merely a uh, a stopping post for our, our vampire dwarves who are going to be all sacrificed to the volcano, as is proper. That is the way. Uh, so we've got five dwarves here. Um, Asub Sexald needs a spear. We need to get him equipped with a spear immediately because if he doesn't have one, there's no point having him in the military. Let's give him a weapon. Let's give him a specific weapon. Uh, and then if we come down... What is Bottegasom? What is this? Show me what Bottegasom is. Can I look at it? Press V. I cannot. I have no power to see what this is. Let's just look for a spear. Spear will be fine. Bronze warhammer, bronze crossbow, bronze bow, silver warhammer, silver spear. Here we go. Silver spear. Bang. Good weapon. Let's get that in there. So at least we know he's supposed to be picking that up when he has a fight. And fingers crossed he will. Right, we've unpaused again. The military are getting into training. Hopefully they'll be following the same schedule that was there before. Wait a minute. I didn't go and make any miners, did I? 
Should I save after all these changes? I know we've been doing tons of quick saves, but it's kind of necessary. We really need to make sure that we don't lose all of our progress all the time. Hmm. What's that there? Hello, Jammerhammer1928. Dwarf Fortress Wiki is down. Oh my god. We're flying blind. There's no way to get any information about Dwarf Fortress right now, or maybe even ever again. Please don't let the dream die. Um, where are we? Uh, looking at the military screen. Done that. Let's quick save. I know it's a lot of faff and we're going to sit here waiting, but if we quick save and go back to Therapist, maybe we can name a few dwarves after viewers. How do you like the sound of that? Is that going to be fun? Is that going to be good stuff? I think that'll be good stuff, won't it? Fun times for all. Although, not if you're in a dark room, because potentially going to a very white screen, as I've mentioned repeatedly before, could be a bit painful on the old eyes. So give yourself a little squint. Maybe close them up. Are you ready? Three, two, one. White screen inbound. There we go. Look at that. Very bright. Very retinally damaging. Uh, let's go and sort by has nickname. Actually, no. First, let's look for sort by... Um, uh, what is it? Nothing. There we go. And then we'll go to the labour screen. Look at professions. Sort by that and see if we've got any peasants knocking around. We've got rangers, but no peasants. How about... Well, let's use some of these fisher dwarves. They can be turned into miners instead of fisher dwarves. We want them coming in from the outdoors, don't we? Having them inside will get this dug digging done much quicker. Look at that. Three dwarves. Should we just turn all the fisher dwarves into miners suddenly? That's going to throw a cat among the pigeons, I think. Politically, it might not be the soundest move I've ever made, but we'll give it a go anyway. We'll see how it all works out. This guy has another skill enabled. Why Why does he have all these fishing skills already disabled? Let's not question it. Let's just turn all of our fisher dwarves into miners. What could possibly go wrong? I mean, disregarding the potential for starvation. It looks like the game's saved already. That was jolly quick. Let's commit the changes here. Anybody want a dwarf named after them? For your information, says Jammerhammer, 1928 isn't a date. The numbers are just on the opposite sides of the keyboard and no one uses it. Ah, well, there we go. Nice and easy. Although you could um, try and pull out some Call of Cthulhu street cred, claim you're some kind of time traveller, or just very old. I mean, I don't know why you would do that if that's not the case, but, you know, it is an option. It's always there as a choice. <coughs> Urist McSuicidal. Oh, my goodness. The fish, the drink, the fish, the fishing is that core to their identity. Let's unpause and see how the uh, the digging unfolds now that we've undone all this fish madness. Hopefully, it will happen nice and quickly. If I go down to the dining hall and then see if they're digging the graveyard, nope, not a single dwarf working on the graveyard. How about the bedrooms? Okay, we've got two dwarves down here. It is not the horde that I just enabled, but maybe they've got to have time to get in, chuck down their fishing rods, and immediately pick up their picks. Then again, do I even have that many picks? One, two, three, four, five, six. I've just made seven dwarves miners. So there is potential that we don't have the equipment for them. Nope, still on therapist. Thank you, Jammerhammer. Back we go. There we are. Now you can see the situation in the bedrooms. They're digging away, but there's only three of them. Only three wee dwarven laddies. Although, having said that, one of these guys hasn't yet developed the minor skin. So, what does he say he is? A fish, a dwarf. Okay. That makes sense. Ah, look, more notifications down here. They are picking up the jobs. Those little flashing yellow squares are the ones that they've decided have been picked for a particular dwarf. Very good. Still only four dwarves, though. I would kind of like some of the other fisher dwarves to down their fishy tools and pick up some actual digging implements. It's far more dwarven. There we go. Look at these rooms. They just rinse through them nice and quick. Ah, this is looking good. Is that another extra designation I can see? No, it's still only four. Hopefully a, a fifth will appear. We should end up with about 12. Oh, hang on, there's a guy over here working solo. Doing some fine corridor work. Well done. Well done for spreading out the progress. Although, we do want to get a focus on completing rooms. So maybe you'll stick together. Oh, hell. 
Look at this. It's full-blown dwarf digging mania. One, two, three, four, five in that room. Then there's this lad over here doing his own digging. Six. Oh, wait, no, he's on his way back. No, he's not. He's going elsewhere. He's going for a little snooze, I'll bet. And why not? He has been digging very hard. You can see all of our low-level miners sort of standing next to stone blocks for ages. They'll level up relatively quickly. But it's going to be our experienced boys who do most of the digging. Is that everything on the dining? There's this area here, lads. That's still acceptable. Or accessible, rather. Look at that. They're all heading out. They're just not interested in doing any more work. That said, progress has been made. Definite progress. Now I'll take a quick peek at the... Uh... There we go. This is going to be the tunnel for the system. They haven't even touched it yet. What priority is it at? Four? Jesus Christ. Priority one, please. Come on, don't dig out the graveyard before the water system. I know usually the graveyard needs to be of extremely high priority, but in this instance, nah. We also need to replace the stairs. There we go, that's better. Hopefully someone will nip out there nice and quickly. Although, having said that, the channel that will expose those digs uh, may be at a low priority as well. It is. It is. Of course it is. There we go. Priority one channel, please. Somebody get down there. The graveyard, you know, it's nice. We need it. But come on, lads. Water in the fortress will probably lessen the need for the graveyard. Oh, a gem setter has been possessed. Interesting. Let's follow this one and see what happens. Is that the one? Sodel. Yeah, that's the one. The gem setter. Let's watch him claim his workshop and see what he does. And then once he claims it, I think we need to quick save again because uh, I'm getting paranoid about these crashes. Deeply paranoid. There we go. He's claimed it. Time to go for some sweet, sweet quick save action. Oh, yeah. It seems like the less that happens between quick saves, the shorter the time taken to quick save. Because it's saving right now. Normally it takes a little while, but we'll see how it goes. You mean to tell me you don't stuff your dwarves in two by two holes? Nope. Nope. I give them full blown rooms, and eventually they will all have fully smooth rooms, fully furnished rooms. But that's still to come. Still to come. We've barely got enough. Uh, rooms for the population that is already here, let alone the likely 200 people who will be arriving at ult ultimately. Having said that, we do have beds for them. <clears throat> so there is that. We don't need to worry about providing the beds. We just have to dig out the space to put the beds in. I do like this, uh, this little tune. Come on, save game. You can pull through. You're the most brave and daring and courageous little dwarf fortress that ever there was. And if any dwarf fortress could do it, it's you. Come on. Please? Alright, let's just drop the pretenses. If you do not do this, I will beat you. Badly, as well. I'll put you in the fucking hospital. See, that took a dark turn, didn't it? You don't... Our relationship is not based on mutual admiration and trust, dwarf fortress. You're on my computer, you follow my rules. And then there we go, that worked. A little bit of threat... Goes a long way when dealing with inanimate objects. Uh, there we go. Let's follow Dwarf and see what he does. Bit of gems, bit of gems, bit of gems. Three kinds of uncut gem and a lump of red stone. Interesting. In it goes. It's not enough, though. He needs more. Where's he going now? He's heading up to the top. He's probably picking up some wood, I'm guessing. Oh, I'm such a good guesser. Here comes more wood. All the way down, and bosh, it goes in, but he's he's not finished. He needs more. He's not interested. I'm reckoning he's going for bones. He's probably heading into the miasma of the butcher's shop. Fantastic. He's pulled the bones out of there. That's nice. <clears throat> Come on. Get that down to your workshop. Surely this is enough. No, he wants more. This is going to be an elaborate piece. Cloth now, you say. And more. What does he need now? More bones? <clears throat> I'm guessing more bones, right? My goodness. I mean, the individual things he's pulled out, maybe apart from the gems, aren't particularly valuable, but... 
you know, there's so much stuff in it. I'm imagining it's going to be fairly, uh, fairly expensive to purchase. Hello, host Ocelot. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us again. He's still going. He wants cloth now, apparently. And that isn't even enough. Piece of stone. Jesus Christ, what is he making? Hello, Cupo. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us again. Ah, we're still in the crash zone. And we're still waiting for them to dig out that massive complex of bedrooms that you showed me how to make it with ease. But once it's done... Ah, here we go. The construction has begun. We've only just begun. It's going to be good. Uh, do we save, though? Do we want to keep that sweet, sweet construction? Or do we want to risk it? Do we want to take the risk? You know what? I'm going to place spikes, uh, and then we're going to wait for the construction, then we're going to save. That's the plan. Let's hope it doesn't cost us. Build trap components. Let's go for the upright spear spike. Bosh, we already have 32 in the fortress, but why stop there? Let's just go hog wild. Menacing ashen spikes, thank you very much. Put another one down here. Plumwood spikes, sure. Wagonwood spike, why not? Maple spikes. What's all that about? Ho oh. ho ho. Uh, there we go. More birch and spikes. Birch, please. More maple spikes. Good. And then we'll put one more set of spikes above those. Bang. Uh, and we'll make it from menacing willow spikes and ashen spikes. Seven, eight, nine, ten. That should be enough, shouldn't it? Yep. Can't put any applewood spikes in. Uh, D. Brilliant. And now we just wait patiently for our artifact to be delivered. It looks like they've got rid of the second statue. That's good. We didn't want that being uh, left anywhere. It was uglying the place up quite badly. Can we dump some of these uh, cave, cave dogs? Uh, not cave dogs, sorry, beak dogs. I feel like it might behoove us to get some of them in that magma sooner rather than later because we are running out of space. Now, we don't want the cages going in as well. We just want them to basically tip the dogs into the lava and then keep the cages, but we'll see how it works out. Maybe the cages will have to go in. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Hmm. Hmm. Come on, item. Make me that sweet item and then we can quick save. Come on, dwarves. You can do it. Have we uh, stopped all the madness over by the river? There's still a bit of madness. It's mostly children playing and uh, this guy collecting wood. Tell me why do the children play? Sorry, that's a very bad Cat Stevens. Um, cages are all coming out. The trabes, the trabes, the traps are being reset. We're doing okay. We're not doing too badly. Um, all this crap out in the gateway is a bit annoying, though. I feel like we need another gigantic furniture stockpile, and we also need to sort out some of our materials. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> Sodel Rigothuvutram. The gem setter has created Unosikud Ozor Tithleth, a red tourmaline weapon rack. She offers it to Cryptbeards. Very nice. Red tourmaline weapon rack, you say? Let's take a little look at that in a bit more detail, shall we? Uh, here it is. Hoof reigns the subtle rumours. A red tourmaline weapon rack. Tourmaline, tourmaline? We'll call it tourmaline for now. Worth 93 grand. Hmm. Not the most expensive thing we've seen, but it has a long description. This is a red tourmaline weapon rack. All Crafts Dwarf ship is of the highest quality. It is encircled, sorry, encrusted with emerald-cut pink tourmalines and cushion hematite cabochons and encircled with bands of kenaf and turkey bone. This object menaces with spikes of maple, wild boar bone and granite. On the item is an image of an oval-cut gem in red tourmaline. On the item is an image of Pari Sokraw, the elf, and Amksu Weed Seduces, the ripe plunge of cruelties, the goblin. Okay, in red tourmaline. Amksu Weed Seduces, cool name, the ripe plunge of cruelties, slightly shadier name. I mean, that sounds a bit rapey. Is striking down Pari, oh thank god for that, Pari Sokraw. The artwork relates to the killing of the elf, Pari Sokraw, by the goblin Amksu Weed Seducers, the ripe plunge of cruelties, in the Pink Hill. In the mid-spring of 210, during Backstutstrok, the incinerated battles. On the item is an image of Idil Sutfor, Sut 
Sutafog, the human and dwarves in giant cave spider silk. Idil Sutafog is speaking with the dwarves. The artwork relates to the impersonation of the human Zasit rock blizzards by the human Idil Sutfog before the old mountain in the early winter of 1041. Nice. Okay, so he's a baddie, right? Pretending to be someone else. Interesting item. Very, very twisty turny, that one. Also, now that we have the item, I feel like another save is in order. Let's be brutal with this saving. Let's just non-stop save, 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 save. I don't want to lose that one. That's a good one. Better than the steel crown. And it also didn't cost it any steel bars, which is a problem. Excuse me. I'm just going to refresh Dwarf Therapist over here. I know you're sitting staring at a paused save screen, but I'm going to refresh Dwarf Therapist and I'm going to look at our military because I'm interested to see how much training actually takes place when someone in the squad is so damned good with their weapon. Uh, I'm just looking at the military now. The lances of gilding. Oh, he hasn't improved. In fact, nobody has improved. We may need to look at their training schedule when the save finishes. Come on, save game. You can do it. Come on. C come on. Come on. You can do it. Please. 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 No? It doesn't like my Skeksis impersonation. Ah, if only I could do it better. Never mind. Never mind. One day, one day I'll manage it. No one will be listening when I do, though. It'll just go out into the ether, never to be heard from again. Excellent! We've got the save, we've got the item. Let's unpause everything, go back up to the surface and take a look at our temple. And that is good. That is good. Is the shaft for our water system being dug? Oh, look at that! They're ripping through! Very nice indeed. I like this. Oh, actually, I thought they were ripping through, but apparently that was a load of old horse shit, and it's just some early learner guy coming in and slowly bipping his way through the stone. Mind you, he probably rinsed through this mud fairly straightforwardly, didn't he? If I make it a two-wide corridor, it'll get dug quicker because more than one dwarf can actually get to it. I suppose we could make several separate shafts rather than just the one or is that crazy town talk it's probably crazy town talk right yeah it's crazy town talk let's just make the one shaft bring it down all the way and then we'll make a little little three by three maybe a four by four box at the bottom to fill up with water and have all of our wells going down into it double wide improves flow more than double allows the flow to spread better okay Okay, well, we'll go for double wide then. That'll get it dug quicker as well. So what I'll say is D mine. Take out this wall. That, that should get done fairly quickly. Go up to here and then say... Oh, not... No, not four. Not priority four. Priority number one, thank you. Numero uno, as they say somewhere. I don't know exactly where they say that, but they do say it somewhere. Uh, we go to I, that's priority one as well. Let's go all the way down to where the stairs have been taken down. Bingo. Lovely. Okay, double wide should make that happen quicker. Hello, Asinohith. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us again. <coughs> Excuse me, having a little moment of uh, brain fartery trying to pronounce your name again. What the fuck? Oh, it wasn't a crash. It's okay. I just accidentally clicked on the window behind. Oh, panic over. Everybody calm down. I don't know why you get so excited. Shh, shh, relax. Settle down. Uh, double wide. Doubling it gives more than two times benefit. Worth doing. We'll do it. Also, do a diagonal to reset the pressure. Okay. Let's have a little look at that then. Let's see if we can do that nicely. Let's see. Where is it? Go down the floor? There we go. So what you're saying is take out these and put in these. Is that a good way to do it? Looks like a sort of like a, a passed out man with a very long neck, doesn't it? I've been poking around your stream for, I feel like, at least two years or longer. Yes, yes, I, I do recognise your name. It's just that <laughs> the names... 
they go by and you, you, you try and pronounce them, especially when you're tired in the middle of the night and it just doesn't quite work out. But I've definitely seen you around here before. You're a familiar name. A familiar name. And not just in Dwarf Fortress. Would you pop in for a little bit of Sekiro? Maybe not Sekiro, maybe Dark Souls. Who can say? Well, you probably could. You probably remember better than me. I can barely remember the last stream and that happened this morning. Masterpiece Maple Spikes. The Wooden Cage order's been completed. That's good. Let's take another look at our orders and see what's on. Um, easy Meals. We could probably up that. They're coming out Masterwork now. So instead of doing that, let's remove. Add Meal. Let's do Lavish Meals. Let's see what happens when we do that with a permanent order. <clears throat> what else can we do? Uh, we've got the order for Silver Warhammers finally beginning. We've got nine on the order still to be done. Melting metal objects is good. Brewing drinks from plants and fruit. I tell you what, in order to get a little bit of booze, I think we need to start designating some fruit gathering areas. And I'm going to start out the front here, I think. So we'll get I. We'll designate the zone here. Make it as big as we can. Where is my pointer? There it is. Is that as big as it goes? That's a little bit disappointing. We'll start it lower because there's no trees in there. Maybe I should just make lots of little ones around each set of trees. That could be a sensible move. Got three trees here. There we go. Can we stretch down to this fourth? Fifth? Ah, oh, this is good. This is a good size. That's it. So this is for gathering and picking fruit. Uh, do we want to do anything else out here? No, I think we're good. Let's uh, set the gather information, pick fruit from trees, pick berries, pull tubers, gather fallen fruit. Sure, that's good. We'll do that. There's more trees over here that we can use. We'll say I. Now, theoretically, all of the non-fruit and nut-bearing trees have been removed. So we should be getting purely fruity goodness now. Purely fruity stuff. There we go. Got one tree caught between them, but that's okay. Uh, we'll leave it with the uh, vanilla collection things. Now, we're going to need some step ladders for this to work properly. So, J, M, Q, S, T, E, P. Uh, what are we going to make them out of? Can we make rock ones? Oh, you can make a black metal step ladder. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I nearly hurt myself there. Uh, did you put channel points on, scoundrel? Channel points? Hmm. Hmm. You probably could have come across my stuff on YouTube quite some time ago, uh, Sinahith, because I've been doing streams and YouTubes for like six or seven years now. Maybe coming up on eight, to be honest, because I was doing it when my son was a little baby. Maybe even slightly before he was born. I'm not sure. Oh, what's this? Redeemed highlight my message. Tidy. Oh, what's that? Have I activated something that I'm unaware of? That looks like it's an inbuilt Twitch feature. Very exciting. Uh, presumably you two other people can engage with that. Should probably figure out what's going on there. I think maybe you're the first person I followed on Twitch. Oh, thank you. Thank you for choosing to put your follow here in Scoundrel Corp. Guaranteed to disappoint you from time to time, but, you know, pay it back with a few flashes of glory. <laughs> Yay! Yay me! I'm so good at promoting myself. Such an excellent stream promoter. Uh, let's make ten step ladders. Good. Fantastic. Let's have a look at our nobles. How are they feeling? Very unhappy. What has the, what's the mayor got to moan about? No quarters. Needs decent quarters. Needs decent dining room. <sighs> okay. So the mayor's office should already have plenty of stuff for the mayor in it. It should have a table, a chair. Uh, auto allocate to the manager. The broker. Also the broker. What? Oh, the mayor. Oh, okay, okay. So he's got an office, it's just not particularly spectacular. That's fine, that's fine. Let's give him a dining room as well. 
uh, a sign table. Oh no, it's already been assigned. Oh, okay. Fair enough. So this room isn't good enough, it would seem. Let's have another look at his complaint. What is it? Decent quarters, decent dining room. He's got a modest dining room. Oh, quarters, not an office. Oh, okay. That makes sense. In that case, let's go up a floor to the bedrooms. Find him one of the larger rooms. This one here in the corner? Let's do it. Build door. Oh, okay. Quite a big oversight there. Build bed. We'll put one in the corner for him. There it can go. And then, of course, we need to order up some doors. J M Q D O O R. Uh, rock door. Come on, for goodness sake. There we go. Rock doors. How many do I want? Let's say I want 50. There we go. Maybe I've got to, I should figure out how to keep the right number of things in stock, shouldn't I? That's going to make things a little bit smoother. Less bottlenecking, I think. Uh, at last, that patch on your camera overlay makes sense. It's snow on the tree. Yeah, it's that missing hole. I just I just made like a, a camera overlay using GIMP and just sort of went, yeah, this will do. Make it look like the edges are sort of burned away or, and, you know, give it a little bit of detail. But I must admit, it doesn't look fantastic on the old Christmas tree, does it? Let's give it a little. There we go. Is that better? There we go. It does sort of look a bit like a bit of settled snow on the tree. You should dump your refuse into the lava. Ah, now, Master Nater. Yes, in principle. But no, because we're currently stripping stuff off of caged prisoners. Oh, a human caravan. Hello. Oh, maybe we should play Planet Caravan. How many wagons have we got? One, two... Two wagons and a guy with a donkey and an anvil. Okay, not excellent. Oh, there's some more pack animals. Don't crash, don't crash. <gasps> Moment of panic there. Uh, they don't seem to mind going over the corpses of the fallen previous trade envoy, which is good. Panzerbeard's been re-elected as mayor. Congratulations, Panzerbeard. Well done. Uh, looks like everyone's coming in, so we'll call our trader up. And we'll move some goods to the depot. Hopefully we have some trap components. That would be nice. But if we don't, then oh well. Uh, yeah, all of these can go in. Hopefully there'll be some spiked wooden balls in there. If not, we may be in trouble with regards to trade. Hello, BRG3386. If you work it right, you could have a dump just for the prisoners next to the cages and a separate dump for unwanted junk. Hmm. BRG, would you uh, care to take my hand and lead me to this Beautiful promised land. Show me how. Give me a little bit of a nudge in the right direction, or maybe even a, a full-blown, full-blooded shove into the pit of knowledge. That sounds a bit aggressive, doesn't it? Maybe I shouldn't use it, that kind of nomenclature. Does the mason handshake with Panzer? Um, I believe so. Oh, thank you very much for the follow, uh, Japs1285. Hmm. Um, what was I doing? I was looking at Fuzzy Logic's comment. Does the mason handshake with Panzer? I mean, I presume so. He's like... The mason's probably one of the most important people in the fortress. Oh, I see what you mean. I'm pretty sure they have some kind of secret handshake, right? I mean, you may be the actual mason, but I'm rest reckoning there's some form of masonic nonsense going on throughout this fortress. A little bit of a drinking club. Uh, oh, have they dug out the... Uh, oh, they finished the, they finished the graveyard. This is very good. Uh, build N. <clears throat> Let's pop them down here. Just as many coffins as you can manage, please, dwarves. There we go. I'm not even going to bother about the extra little tomb bits off the edge. The volume of corpses coming through this fortress stands to increase rather than drop off. So, you know, having prepared storage for all those dead boys, very important. Armor stand? Don't do this to me, game. Please. Do not do this to me. There we go. Oh, this is nice. This is very nice. Oh, yes. A little bit of corpse overhead. Never hurt any fortress. Uh, there 
we go. In it goes. I'm seeing red text in the chat window. Oh my goodness, somebody's atting me. They're probably telling me this can be done much simpler, but uh, in my bullish pig-headedness... My bullish pig? My piggish bull-headedness? Anyway, in my bravado, I'm going to ignore what's being said until after the fact, once I've placed all these beautiful coffins, which currently look like suckers on the underside of some giant cephalopod. Oh, no, not an armor stand. You can stick that armor stand right up your poo chute and hopefully it will get jammed in there forever. You barbarian, how dare you suggest I wish to place armor stands. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit fruity with the old dwarf fortress. Should probably calm down. There we go. We've only got a few coffins left, but I think this is enough overhead for now. It's going to be good. Let's look at that message. There's a Christmas tree next to me, by the way. Yes, indeed. <laughs> it's a lovely Christmas tree. A Tannenbaum, if you will. Uh, where are we going? Uh, a Freemason, level 20. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Japs1285, this is the Phobos tile set. Give me a second, I'll just go and have a look. Um, graphics. Yes, P H O E B U S. F Phoebus? Phobos? Something like that. It's one of the ones that comes packaged with the Lazy Noob pack, so if you want uh, an easy time of it, perhaps go looking there to fulfill your texture pack needs. Mmm, texture. Lovely. Uh, sorry, I got a little bit confused and distracted there. Let's unpause and hope that we don't get a crash before our trader can get this trade off. Do we save? Let's quick save before we do the trade, because I would hate to do a trade and then have to wait for the traders to turn up again if we have a crash. So, pausey pausey. Uh, over to Dwarf Hack. Do -do 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 -do. And then we quack sieve and just wait a little while, see what happens. See how it goes out. Uh, Cosmobus pointing out that you can never have enough coffins. That's probably correct. <clears throat> You've got to move down the list for the triple tap enter. Yes, tidy. Yes. You've reminded me. that that's I've been doing it with the spike traps. I just haven't been doing it with placing other things like beds and doors and all those things you place in bulk. I should be more careful. I will attempt to do it. Mmm. Yummy, Cosmobus. Highlight my message. I didn't even know this stuff existed. This is exciting. If you use DF hack, there is a strip caged command. Yes, Druid's Mead. That has been done. That has been done. Um, did BRG step forward with the uh, information on how to do this? Not yet. Not yet. They're an unknown quantity as of yet. I mean, is it just proximity? Oh, hello. That looks like it might crash. It's all greyed out. Please don't crash mid save. We know it's happened before. Come on. You can do it, Dwarf Fortress. Don't let me down. Don't give me reason for war. There we go. No Cassus Belly today. Uh, let's unpause it. What was I doing before I saved? Oh yeah, checking the trade out. Let's have a look how they're doing. Uh, we can't do it yet. Panzerbird is currently eating. So we've just got to wait for him to finish his dinner. DF is hangry. That could be it. It could well be just waiting for some food to go in its little dwarven bellies. Should we check out our stockpiles? Let's do it. Let's have a look at our stocks. What have we got going on here? Um, okay, all very exciting, but realistically I'm interested more in uh, things like steel bars and whatnot. Uh, where is it? There we go. Uh, Q? There we go. Oh, not Q-Bar. B-A-R-S. There we go. Um, 64 iron bars. The number's going up. 17 steel bars. I'm not sure if that's going up or not. We don't want these gold bars forbidden. What on earth is that all about? Why would these be forbidden? Screw that. Uh, Scoundrel declares a no CB war on Dwarf Fortress. The dwarves have formed a coalition against Scoundrel. Oh my goodness. <laughs> What's going on? What have I done? The dwarves will be fine. The dwarves will be fine. No Cassus Belly today. They can't cause... They they can't do anything. They can't do anything. They can't move without their CB. <clears throat> Excuse me. Getting a bit hearts of iron in here. We should have a monthly offering to Ognet. Not the worst idea, it has to be said. Still can't trade. Panzerbear is on, it, is on his way, though. 
That's his current job, trade at the depot. I think I just saw someone go in who looked a lot like him. Brilliant. Now we may trade. Let's have a little look. What have we got? Copper bars, bronze bars. Before we do anything, let's just make sure that we have some spike wooden balls to trade. Because we appear to have picked up a lot of bloody metal. Which is fine, I suppose. Here we go. Here's our spike balls. It's careful not to sell this 38 grand item. What earth is it? It's a bow. Oh, it's Beguile, Beguiler clearing the fondled friends. One of our creepily named legendary artifacts. Osdin Kickrost? I'm not selling that because it's not worth anything, but uh, it's a bow. The Rip of Stockades. Meh. Uh, steel battle axe, copper. Oh, here's another spike wooden ball. I like it. Mm, more spike wooden balls. Here we go. Oh, no, that's an item. That's uh, Bottegasum. What's Bottegasum? Oh, it's the Cobalt Urges, a bronze crossbow. We won't be selling that, thank you. Okay, so we've got 18 grand's worth of trade credit in the bank. Let's have a little look at what we can get. Um, we'll top up our bars just by both sets that they have there. What the hell? Is that everything they've got? Oh my god, what is this shit tier trading? I haven't got some kind of search on, have I, that's filtering it? I haven't. Oh my god. They've, they've got nothing. They've got a genuinely bullshit... Oh, hang on a minute. No, no, they have got loads of stuff. For some reason, I got a little bit confused there. What is this? A clear glass lelku. This sounds like a musical instrument, if I've ever seen one. <clears throat> this is a clear glass lelku. The chime is made from clear glass. The stick is made from peafowl bone. The lelku is a huge stationary percussion instrument. It consists of a glass chime. The musician scrapes the chime with a bone stick. The instrument has a single low pitch. The instrument has a strong, rich timber. So it's a, a bone stick scraped across a glass chime, which is probably going to sound a bit strong and rich. It's not very strong and rich, is it? Maybe it's got a bit of resonating. Maybe it does that thing, you know, when you drag your finger across a smooth surface and it makes that noise. <coughs> How did that sound? I think that sounds like a good sound for the Lel Coup. Nice and easy. One in the bank straight away. Uh, what's an anaconda bone rush? Let's have a little look at that. A Rosha. This is a finely crafted anaconda bone rocher. It is encircled with bands of well-crafted briolette cut picture jaspers. The body is made from anaconda bone. The strings are made from kenaf. The hammers are made from earthenware. The rocher is a mid-sized hand-held cloth stringed instrument with a bone body. The instrument rests flat as the musician strikes the 24 strings with ceramic hammers. Tuning is possible with adjustable bridges. Tuning is also possible using small levers. The instrument has a four octave range going from a low to a high pitch. It has three registers. The low register has a noisy, full, round, vibrating timber. Mm -hmm. So low, noisy, round, vibrating. <clears throat> and it's a, a hammered string instrument. So ding a ding a ding a ding ding a ding a ding a ding. So like a ding a ding a ding a ding. Or maybe uh, round and vibrating. That's better. The middle register begins at mid-low pitch and has a vibrating nasal rough timber. So... Probably should have paused Swerwer for this, but never mind. The high register begins at mid-high pitch and has a steady, watery timber. <laughs> No, the watery, that doesn't work. Maybe maybe watery, like, I could get a little bit of a on. That's not very steady, is it? It's getting lower than this is supposed to be mid-high pitch. That's my best effort at the sound of an anaconda bone rocher. Interesting. We're not buying it, but interesting.
A Bayberry Wood Ezl. Oh, that's an Ezlam, isn't it? No, an Ezlul. What's an Ezlul? Let's have a little look. Hello, Orchimedes. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us. We have got uh, all sorts of shinies in stock. That is very true. Very true. Uh, a seasonly offering to Ongit. We will get them coming as quick as we can. Once they're all stripped of their gear, bang, 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 bang. It's just going to be constant sizzle. There's going to be goblin steam coming from the top of our volcano. Volcano? <clears throat> volcano. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. Making bassy sounds. I can hear you from downstairs from my speakers. Oh, my goodness. Bassy sounds. <laughs> Make your house shake. Hello, Sanctum Spirit Stone. Welcome back. I was about to say welcome home, but that was only because it rhymed. <clears throat> this is a well-crafted Bayberry Wood Eslal. It is encrusted with finely crafted cushion sunstone cabochons, decorated with well-crafted donkey hoof, and encircled with bands of cushion stibnite cabochons. The body is made from Bayberry Wood. The strings are made from Raimi. The plectrum is made from clear glass. The Eslal is a large, handheld, cloth-stringed instrument with a wooden body. The instrument rests flat as the musician picks the 31 main strings with a glass plectrum. Fourteen other strings vibrate in sympathy and are rarely played themselves. Four drone strings are occasionally plucked. Tuning is possible with adjustable bridges. The instrument has a five-octave range, going from a very low to a high pitch. It has four registers. The low register has a choppy, steady, fragile timber. I believe we've done the Eslul before, so we won't, we won't delve too deep because i seem to remember it had some problematic oxymoronic qualities so we'll skip by it now <clears throat> what happens with a common skate luther lug what's that let's have a look a leather lugu a skate leather lugu i don't think we've seen the lugu before let's have a look <clears throat> this is a common skate leather lugu it is encircled with bands of briolette cut white chalcedonies the blowpipe is made from olive wood the bag is made from common skate leather. The melody pipe is made from bronze. The drone pipe is made from pomelo wood. This object menaces with spikes of mule bone and lace agate. The lugu is a large handheld wind instrument through which constant airflow is maintained by use of a leather bag, itself supplied by a wooden blowpipe. The musician selects the pitch by stopping holes in the metal melody pipe attached to the bag. The melody pipe is a conical bore tube with a flared bell. A wooden drone pipe provides constant accompaniment. The instrument has a four-octave range going from an extremely low to a middle pitch. It has four registers. The low register has a steady, harsh, nasal timbre. So low as possible, steady, but harsh and nasal. <sighs> The middle register begins at a very low pitch and has a vibrating, raucous timber. So... <laughs> raucous? Raucous. Vibrating. Maybe? As you can probably guess from my choice of song here, I'm imagining it as some kind of bagpipe contraption, which the text definitely supports as a reading. Definitely. Um, where are we going? Uh, the high register begins at a low pitch and has a steady, raspy timber. So it starts at low pitch, steady and raspy. <laughs> Needs to be a little bit more pipey, doesn't it? <laughs> Not very good. The top register begins at mid-low pitch and has a full, vibrating, piercing timber. <laughs> no, it's not working. <laughs> I don't know, whatever that noise was, <coughs> it was beginning to make my throat sore. So let's step back from the Lugu and consider it as a purchase. It's only 180. Why not? We haven't bought many musical instruments, if any. We've seen an Ezlul before. We've seen a Rosha before. I don't think we've seen a Senra. And I definitely don't think we've seen one made of red panda leather. 
very nice very stylish what's going on in chat over here let's take a look beautiful music this sounds more like a piano than a vocal thing interesting five octaves is impossible with anything you can carry that's true i'm not going to make it up to five octaves maybe whistling i'm not too bad with whistling i've got a fair old range there <laughs> No, couldn't quite get that high. Theme tune to the Dark Crystal, though. Let's try. Probably shouldn't do it into uh, <laughs> into the microphone. Smeagol doing an aria. Oh, that makes sense. Yes. Precious. <laughs> precious. Precious notes. Uh, um, what has it got in its pockets? Uh, where are we? Sorry, I'm getting confused. The Senra is a mid-sized... Oh, wait. No, we've got the whole description to do. <clears throat> this is a red panda leather Senra. The bellows is made from gorilla leather. Ooh, controversial. The bag is made from red panda leather. The melody pipe is made from common snapping turtle bone. The drone pipe is made from crystal glass. The senra is a mid-sized handheld wind instrument through which constant airflow is maintained by use of a leather bag. It's self-supplied by a leather bellows. The musician selects the pitch by stopping holes in the bone melody pipe attached to the bag. The melody pipe is a conical bore tube with a flared bell. A glass drone pipe provides constant accompaniment. The instrument has a three-octave range, going from a low to a mid-high pitch. At all pitches, the instrument has a choppy, steady timbre. It has two registers. The low register has a strong, piercing, strident timbre. Strong, piercing, strident, choppy and steady. Now, right there, choppy and steady don't seem to work well together. Choppy and steady does not really work for me but maybe if its choppiness is at a steady rate so a repeated choppiness hmm. hmm piercing and strident low it's another bagpipe thing made from gorilla leather no less um so um <laughs> <laughs> That's my best bet there. The high register begins at a mid low pitch and has a vibrating, fragile timber. <laughs> no, it's going to be mid low. <laughs> the center is definitely the weaker of the two instruments. I don't like it. We're not even gonna we're not even gonna try buying one of those. What a waste of money. Uh the hairbone <clears throat> Russia we've seen. The earthenware Ammon, is that the enormous ceramic block? I think it might be. This is an earthenware ammon. It is encircled with bands of tiger bone and loon bone. The ammon is a huge stationary percussion instrument. It consists of a ceramic bar. The musician strikes the bar. The instrument has a single low pitch. The instrument has a sweet timber. Um. It's not the most brilliant sound, but I feel like of all the sounds I've made of all these instruments, it's probably one of the closest to a real instrument sound. Uh, we've seen the Eslil, the Lugu, uh, the Punit. Have we seen the Punit? The Punit? <clears throat> uh, no. This is a well-crafted stoneware Punit. The drum is made from stoneware. The stand is made from cryolite. The head is made from opossum leather. The hammers are made from native gold. The punet is a large stationary percussion instrument. It consists of an hourglass ceramic drum with a leather head which rests on a stone stand. The musician strikes the head with stone hammers. The instrument produces a complex sound that cannot be said to be of a single pitch. The instrument has a thin, steady, rough timber. <laughs> a, a complex drum. What kind of, maybe if I use my body as some kind of drum. <laughs> That's my best guess at the punet. We will not be purchasing a punet. Uh, now we're into the toys. We're not very interested in those, so let's start the old swirler back up and get on with the music that's supposed to be happening in the background. Mmm, lovely. So, I get the feeling we're going to need to immediately save once we're finished here, but that shouldn't be too bad. Do I want any cows and whatnot in cages? 
not really. We'll take what uh, food we can get off of them and what drink we can get, but other than that, I'm not really interested. Foxtail millet, alpaca milk, nah, spelt beer, sure. River spurts burl? What's a river spurts burl when it comes down to it? River spirits. Oh, yes, please. Not alpaca milk, potato wine, black mamba venom. No, we don't want that. Can I zoom in and out here? Yes, I can. There we go. This should make more sense. Now we can read a bit more. Uh, buckets, training, oh, actual swords. Very exciting. Morning star, scimitar, flail, halberd, pick, pike, whip. Bronze whip. Have they got any silver whips? We could buy a, a silver whip for our uh, our lasher, couldn't we? Let's see if there's one knocking around. I don't see any. Picks. Uh, large white shark leather shirt, I'm presuming. Coats. Shoes. Boots. Bucklers. Helms. Mittens and gloves. Gauntlets. Ropes. Sandbags. Do we want to buy sand? Uh, yeah, let's buy sand. Why not? We can start glass soon enough. It's not like we haven't got access to magma to power the furnaces. Uh, leather bags, sure. Caper seeds, why not? Uh, red sand, yes please. Hmm. Red beans bag. Sure, I'll have some red beans, please. Tiger shark leather, chickpeas, sure. Red sand. Llama wool, yellow sand, raspberry seed, string beans, black sand, yellow sand. Uh, let's buy a bag of cloth, or a bin of cloth and a bin of leather, just to, just to make sure we've got something in stock, even though we're probably massively overstocked. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Scroll down a bit past the cloth and the leather. Here we go. A goat hoof figurine. Boring. We're not going to buy anything. We're going to only sell stuff like that. We're not buying it. Large briel up kept. Briolet cut pink jades, presumably. Iron anvils, yes. Thank you. We'll buy all those. Didn't bring any steel anvils, did you? Very disappointing. However, the sting is somewhat removed by this stingray tripe and chopped hippo liver. Lovely. Mmm. Brook lamprey, long yam plants, potato plants, bitter melons, onions, blueberries, strawberries. Bilberries, bit of vetch leaves, and then there's some thread and yarn that's accidentally got put into the mix. But that doesn't matter, because we don't really care. <laughs> we can just buy that stuff. Do I want a corkscrew or a spiked silver ball? I don't think we do. I will do a search at a later date for all the steel they have, if we've got any trade credit left over. Let's buy some cheese. It is, after all, highly edible. Got a couple of random splints and crutches in there as well. Ah, ah, here we go, here we go. Um, Treaties on the Author. This one sounds like it could be a bit of a boring book about the guy who wrote the book writing another book. <coughs> this is a turkey parchment scroll. The rollers are made from obsidian. Written on the item is an essay entitled Treaties on the Author, authored by Stosbub Goolyeld. It concerns the authoring of It Must Have Been Hames by the goblin Stosbub Goolyeld in Blotted Umbras in the late autumn of 68. The writing has a hint of viciousness to it. Overall, the prose is amateurish at best. Great. Now the goblins are at it. Previously, it was just the elves being all like, oh, I've written a book. It's all about me writing my other book. And now the goblins are coming in and going, oh, I've written a book. It's all about me writing another book what I wrote. Which is a very different proposition and far more acceptable. <coughs> Elves showing off their literary prowess. Ugh, pff, disgusting. Behead them. Goblins showing off their literary prowess. Oh, at least they tried. Behead them. Um, what have we got here? Uh, bodies for instruments. Not very interested in that. Forest and the Universe. Here's an interesting book. This is a mountain goat parchment scroll. The rollers are made from kimberlite. This object is adorned with hanging rings of clear zircon and menaces with spikes of rock salt. On the item is an image of ashes in cowhorn. Written on the item is a guide entitled The Forest and the Universe, authored by Nithy Watermatches. Sorry, Water Matches. It concerns the forest retreat Paddleshore. The writing is very rigid. Overall, the prose is amateurish at best, not one for our library, not after the last lot that came through. We had some glorious books. Uh, some bellows, an olivine-bound codex. 
Mm, very exciting. Uh, Choppy modifies steadily. Oh, okay, Cosmo bus still way back there on the musical instruments. I've not been paying enough attention to chat. What a what a barbarian. What a monster. Uh, Sionohith uh, says, you can fight with toy weapons to cut costs. Oh, I didn't know that. Although I'm probably just going to buy any steel toys and melt them down. That's really my goal. A great reading voice. Well, thank you very much. Much appreciated. Um, <clears throat> speaking of which, this is a well-crafted olivine-bound codex. This object is adorned with hanging rings of well-crafted white stalk bone. The written portion consists of a 101-page guide entitled A Meditation on the Farm, authored by Desley Playful Legends. It concerns the Hamlet Braided Jumped. The writing breaks sharply between topics with regularity, and it shows a hint of tender tenderness. Overall, the prose is passable. Uh, not really feeling that one either. Let's not buy. An author clays bound codex. What delights lay within? This is a finely crafted author clays bound codex. The written portion consists of a one page essay entitled Records of the Composition, authored by Thicket Paint Seized. It concerns the authoring of Problematic Fence by the dwarf Thicket Paint Seized in Dimeet in the late winter of 1002. The writing is somewhat self indulgent. Overall, the prose is not awful, but not very good either. I imagine. I can see where this has come from. Some, his neighbour has put in a fence some time ago that's upset him. He's written a letter talking about it, saying, Hey, can we get rid of this fence? I don't like it. It's on my boundary line. And then, you know, he's then got so worked up that he's written an entirely second, an entirely separate book, which is weirdly enough only a one-page book, um, to just explain why he's so angry about the whole thing. Poor angry dwarf. Well, we won't be buying your sad little book. Let's look at this rock salt bound codex. <clears throat> this is a rock salt bound codex. This object is adorned with hanging rings of eagle bone. On the item is an image of diamonds in cat bone. The written portion consists of a one page untitled letter authored by Locum Cloister Blades. The work has no particular subject. The writing is a rant, more or less, yet it is reasonably serious. Overall, the prose is not awful, but not very good either. This is so shit, I'm going to have to buy it. I cannot just let this carry on out into the world. It's such a waste. Such a waste. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've got a bit of windy pops. This is a cobaltite bound codex. The written portion consists of a one-page essay entitled The World of the Market, authored by Amos Gemgrips. It concerns the career change from herbalist to poet of the dwarf Amos Gemgrips in Dimeet in 615. The writing has a touch of melancholy, yet it gives a feeling of compassion here and there. Overall, the prose is amateurish at best. What's all this amateur hour bullshit that's coming through? A silvery gibbon parchment sheet. Oh, parchment sheets don't have anything written on them. Boo, look at that, we're back to the beginning. Very sad, very sad. Do not like, one out of ten, would not try again. Right, let's have a little search for some steel. Let's see what's in here. S-T-E-E. -E. Oh, boo. How about iron? We've got some iron stuff. Uh, is it worth buying all that shit to melt it down? I don't think it is. It seems quite expensive for what it is. We'll do a quick check to see if there's any silver, and then we'll check to see if we've missed any sand. Wow, that is an expensive silver halberd. Uh, other than that, it doesn't look like there's enough to warrant melting stuff down. Yeah, we'll leave that. Uh, and sand, finally. Sand. Uh, sand pear wood bucket. Sand bag. And another sand pear wood crutch. Okay. Let's clear the search to trade. I am currently giving them 15 grand profit. I think it might make sense to take a few things off the table just so they're not rinsing us quite low, quite so severely. Let's give them... Oh, no wonder we're giving them so much profit. I put a fucking legendary artifact in there. But they are still making a... We're 2,000... Bloody hell. All right, let's take off... And that. Grand and a half-ish. That might do it. Let's see if they'll take this bait. Are you sure you want to trade the selected goods? Yes, I'm sure. Curleb seems very happy with the trading. Well, fantastic. In that case, let's get out of here. Let's uh, remove our trader from the depot. Press G for the items. 
down to training weapons. No, sorry. Uh, trap components. Fuck it, they're all here. It's just there. We go. Remove all those, and then pause the game. Whoops. Pause. Oops. Pause the game, fantastic, and we'll do another quick save, because we don't want to lose our trades. That would be unbearable. There we go, saving underway. Fantastic. Um, you probably wouldn't want to fight with toys. Well, it's a good job you clarified that that was a joke, because frankly, I would have taken it seriously, and we may well have ended up with all sorts of mayhem involving people coming out with hammers that just go, <coughs> which wouldn't do anyone any favours. It would humiliate the people being attacked, and kill the people attacking. Have you got any tips on surviving sieges? If I recall, I could survive a few years ago and would eventually crumble. Honestly, get yourself a nice trap corridor to capture as many people as you can, like I've got here. Um, and also... Oh, hello. It's frozen. It's okay, it'll come back. Fingers crossed. Also, don't be afraid of waggling a, um, a drawbridge up and down. Don't be frightened of smushing people under that or flinging them into ceilings or just generally into space. You know, it works well. That's what we've been doing up until now. Obviously, my spike corridor is going to be probably more effective, but we'll see. It's certainly going to kill more enemies. Well, I say certainly. It's likely to kill more enemies, but we'll see. We'll see. That's right, Vizek, the good old Dwarven Atom Smasher, which I must admit, I've never really been a big user of. I mean, not in... Not because of any strongly held principle, just that I've never really got round to giving it a crack. But this fortress, particularly around here, there has been some unbelievably high intensity smushing. I mean, goblins, 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 goblins have been smushed under it. Not to mention beak dogs and trolls. Excuse me. I'm getting terrible windy hiccups here. Hopefully it won't impede the stream. How long have we been going for? An hour and three quarters. My goodness, that's quite the epic. But that's okay, we streamed earlier, and I am going to have to finish relatively early because I've got to get up in the morning. But we will. We'll get some more done, don't worry. I'm not going immediately. I need to get back into Dwarf Fortress, says uh, Sinohith. Sinohith, God fuck it, I'm going to get that name right. <laughs> been playing a lot of Pixel Dungeon. I've not actually seen Pixel Dungeon. The name rings a bell, but that may be just a false memory in my mind. Because, let's face it, there's a few games with the name Pixel. Or at least Pixel in the name. Uh, how are my dwarves doing? Are they actually training in the military? Or is this just being ignored as an option? Okay, the Lancers of Gilding are supposed to both sleep and train in it. So I don't know why they're not. Oh, I know why. Because I've set them to train with more people than they have, haven't I? M. Uh, S. Yeah, look, they're supposed to train with eight minimum. There's five of them. Shit. Uh, how do I edit this? Uh, e for edit order. Uh, take it down to five, how many there are. And then we'll copy and paste, 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 paste. Brilliant. Okay, unpause. Should we place some more spikes or should we start getting them hooked up to the lever? Let's place more spikes. Build trap components down to the upright spear spikes. Pop them in there and... Ooh! Okay. We appear to have run out of wooden spikes. That's a little bit disappointing. Um, let's look at our orders and see what's going on. I have no roots. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to press J and M. There we go. So milk animal make cheese. Fine. Don't technically have the materials for that. Brew drink from plant, brew drink from fruit, fine, we have got materials from that. Melting metal objects, good. Forging silver warhammers, not happening for some reason. Constructing rock mechanisms, slowly being got through. Preparing lavish meals, fine, 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 and construct rock doors. Okay, so what's the bottleneck on these silver warhammers, I wonder? Why are we not seeing this production kicking off? What's wrong with this workshop? <clears throat> Nothing, apparently. Ah, we may not have the silver. That's a very good point. Oh, someone's killed the mechanic. Or maybe they just died, I don't know. Just going to have a quick look and see how much silver we've got. Giant silver axe blade. Uh, three. You know what? We're going to melt those bad boys. Bang, you're going in. Uh, silvery gibbon, serrated silver disc. Not forbidden. Let's unforbid all this shit. Why would that be forbidden? 
home. Moses. Uh oh. Is that slowly being is that all the stuff that's slowly being taken off of my uh Ah oh shit it is, isn't it? Uh crap, what was it again? Silver. Silver longsword. Ah shit, this stuff is all being removed from the uh cages, isn't it? Damn it. Oh well some of the Oh a silver whip! <clears throat> Fantastic. Let's unforbid that. And then we can give it to our Lasher Boy, can't we? Lasher Boy. Oh, hang on a minute. Is this stuff all in the trade depot? Let's come figure this out later on. Let's, for now, go to military and find our Lasher. I'll look in Dwarf Therapist and see what he was called. Uh, sorting by squad. Here's the Lasher. His name is Udol Zonathak. Should be in the Lances of Gilding. There he is. There's the Lasher. Cool. So, we're going to press E for equipment. We're going to go, oops, back to our Lasher. We're going to select him a weapon. We're going to say specific weapon. And then I'm going to, please let me search your filter. No, of course not. Why would that be allowed? You dankus. Just quick checking. Nope, not allowed. Just got to find a silver whip in here. Silver spear, silver mace, silver warhammer, silver whip. Bang! A lasher with a silver whip. Very nice. Very cool. Again, though, why is no one using our weaponsmith's forge? It feels like a massive oversight. Then again, we did look and see there was very little silver, didn't we? So that would explain a lot. Maybe I should make something out of iron? Maybe I should start banging out some steel stuff that we can melt down. That might be a good idea, actually. Let's do that. Let's start making some steel shit. Um, uh, J M Q S T E E L. Uh, oh, hang on. We've only got a weaponsmith, haven't we? Not an armor smith. So if I make steel weapons, we're not going to get much of that steel back. It's armor smithing that truly gives us the. ROI that we we crave. Um, why am I not allowed to sort this with everybody at the top? Oh, because I've sorted it by squad. There we go. Now I can see who our best person for the job is. Uh, armory. Huh. They've only got two levels in armor smithing. That's not ideal. Nonetheless, they do have the skill. So let's get Feb on the job then. I'm going to order up some steel space uh, leggings just for the uh, just for the exploits. There we go. How many do I want? Uh, let's order. Let's make it a uh, perpetual order. Sure. <laughs> Why not? Just make as many as we've got steel for. That'll do. And then once we've got those made, we'll melt them down and the cycle will continue. It's the circle of steel. It's beautiful. Uh, I love how your advice is don't be afraid to kill dwarves in horrible fashions. That's where they're right. They're very right. Killing dwarves in horrible fashions is very much part of Dwarf Fortress. Pierre Triple Zero, I'm glad you ended up in my recommended channels. Well, me too. It's nice to have you here. Good old Pierre Triple Zero. Uh, I say good old, as though we've met before, but no, nope, I don't think our paths have crossed. But it's all good. It's all good. I'm sure there'll be uh, plenty of time for us to get to pseudo-know each other in this parasocial relationship of ours. Uh, let's build that bridge at the top there. Build bridge. Uh, I don't want a retractable one. I want one that opens up that way. I want to place it here. I want to make it three wide and maybe three deep. Sure, that's fine. Place that there. We're going to make it out of granite blocks. Yes, we are. And then once it's in place, we'll hook it up to a lever and we'll be able to do full access control. Won't that be a delight? We need to put more orders in for spikes, don't we? JMQ uh, Wooden Spike. There we go. Menacing wooden spikes, yes please, and if you wouldn't mind, I would like a, a perpetual order of those. Just churn the fuckers out as fast as you can. 
It's going to be worth it when we've got a corridor of pokey pokey wood killing goblins. It's going to be lovely. It's going to be amazing. Their heads will end up on pikes. The pikes will go up their barn. Some of them will have their genitals ripped off by spikes. It's just going to be a whole barrel of laughs. <clears throat> I'm already thoroughly tumescent just thinking about it. <clears throat> Excuse me and my coughing. Is that suspended? Of course it's suspended, scoundrel. Why would it not be suspended? That's crazy talk. Right, maybe I should extend these floors. Uh, so, in that case, build C, F. There we go. Floor placement. And we want to do it on the level below here. Ah, shit. Go up a floor. Down a floor. Yeah, this is good. Bingo. That should do the job. We'll make it out of granite blocks again. Where are they? Granite? Granite blocks. There we go. Fantastic. And then we can find the limits and fill the rest of the edge up and start putting in more furnaces. Because they're going to be useful. Oh, my phone has made it up to 28% charge. How exciting. <clears throat> if only the cable were much better. Mutilated goblins does sound delightful, but it's not as delightful as mutilated elves. Let me tell you a beautiful story about a trap we had in our last fortress. Now, just close your eyes for a second and imagine this wonderful scene. An elf, frightened, afraid of being slaughtered by dwarves chasing it, dances into a trap corridor, only to activate a trap filled with silver hammers which flail and rain down upon it, giving it a gelding blow. Gelding blow from a hammer. It doesn't just hit them. It removes their testicles. Think about that. Imagine Elf's Grope wrapping around the hammer and then the hammer continuing on its merry way, accelerating so fast that it just pulls the whole bag off and wears it like a shower cap. Beautiful. I would love to have been the dwarf who went in to reset that trap and clean it up, who found the little thing wrapped around the hammerhead and had a little chuckle. It would have been lovely. Fantastic stuff. I really despise elves. They're disgusting. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll try and bring down the spice levels, chaps. Try and make it easier. What will we do with all the goblin testicles? You know what? Just owing to the method of execution that we're currently engaging with the traps... I'm not sure there's going to be a lot of goblin testicles left to do anything with. I get the feeling that what we're going to end up is a lot of goblin smoke, because they're being plummeted down into our little uh, into our little volcano here. It's very nice, isn't it? It looks like Fuzzy Logic is banging out some doors now, so maybe we should go and look at the, the bedroom situation? Hey, let's talk about the bedroom situation, shall we? Oh, yeah. Uh, let's pop some in these rooms. I'm going to place some with the mouse, because I can. Why else would I do it? Uh, pop some there. Enter. Bed there. Bed there. I was at first being kind of symmetrical about the whole thing and putting beds in rooms that made sense. But now I have abandoned sense. And now I'm enjoying just placing beds wherever I bloody well feel like it. However I please. These rooms don't even have doors on yet, but we are getting there. We're making it. We're going to do it, people. This fortress will carry on for Evan and a day. For Evan? <laughs> Who's Evan? I've never met anyone called Evan. I've seen a guy called Evan make celebrities eat hot sauce. But beyond that, no Evans in my life. There we go. Let's uh, pop some more beds in. I think once these beds have been placed, it might make sense to do another quick save. It probably wasn't that long ago, but it feels like my last quick save was too long ago. Maybe I'll even take a break. Hmm. And I know that the viewership doesn't uh, really like that and <laughs> tend to disappear, but that's okay. You're allowed to do whatever you want. You're allowed to toddle off to wherever you like. You don't have to hang around here, even though it would be most gratifying if you did. Right, let's put some doors in now. How many doors have we got? Quite a few. Quite a few. Oh, thank you very much for the follow, Pierre. Much appreciated. Um, let's get these doors in. Come on. Don't get distracted by uh, 
lovely French names in chat giving you follows. It's like uh, someone from Europe turning around and looking at me and going, I know, I know, shh, 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 stroking my hair as they put me down. Um, that got dark, didn't it? Very dark. Very dark indeed. I watch um, a show from a comedian called Richard Herring where he interviews celebrities in the Leicester Square Theatre. Funnily enough, it's called Richard Herring's Leicester Square Theatre Podcast. But uh, for a while, he had a question that he asked. He's got a book of emergency questions that he's written. And uh, for a while, he was pulling one out, which was, which celebrity would you like to stroke your hair as you died? So, you know, it's an interesting proposition. I think it came from something to do with an Australian soap opera dog. But I can't remember. Or that was who he chose to stroke his hair. But it's an interesting thought. If I had to choose a celebrity, I'm not sure who I would pick, though. I mean, hopefully, you know, a certain... There's a whole load of celebrities who will probably, hopefully, die before I do. And not in a kind of, fuck you, I hate you, die kind of way. In a kind of, they're at least twice my age. If I die before them, that's going to be sorely disappointing. Uh, the merchants are leaving and the beds are in place. That's good. Time for a quick save. There's no way I'm going to risk losing this. We've made too much progress. Sweet, sweet progress. Mmm, I can practically taste it. Oh shit, we better save. Pause the game first. Doesn't make a lot of sense to leave the game running in the background while we're saving because it's only going to cause woe and misery. Uh, Sinohith says, can you stroke my hair when I'm dying? Well, I mean, I suppose so. Maybe I should get myself a job in a pall palliative care centre. Just whispering sweet nothing is into the ears of the dying. That's it. Let go. Just sign here. That's right. I know it says it's a will, but you're imagining this. You're drifting off him to the other side. Your children will get everything they deserve. And I will get everything else. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't. I'm not the right kind of person for that kind of work. I am, at my core, somewhat of a bastard. Uh. <laughs> not that much of a bastard, though, hopefully. Hopefully it's a fine balance between bastardry and niceness that I'm achieving. Then again, maybe not. Maybe people are hearing the things I'm saying and going, Good Lord, add another note to the book. We need to bust this motherfucker. Let's get him going down. No, let's not get him going down. That's the wrong kind of phrasing. Let's... Bring him down. That's the word. <laughs> That's what we're looking for. Ah. Come on, save game. Come on, it's one o'clock in the morning. I don't have time for all this waiting. I've got to get as much progress done as I can before I have to finish and go to bed. I've got an appointment in the morning. Ugh. Blech. Ooh. Uh, let's see if we can hook up this uh, upper gate. Right, that's the granite lever for the outdoor gate. This is for the inner gate that we already have. We need another one for the inner inner gate. So, I'm going to place it next to the inner. I'm going to say build trap component lever. I'm going to stick it there, and that's going to be inner inner. There we go. Excuse me. Hopefully my flatulence was muffled by the sofa cushions. But uh, deep down in my heart, I know it wasn't. I know that somebody watching will have been horribly offended by the sound of my body bot speaking out. Uh, free tomb? No, it's got somebody in it. We don't want to free this up. Right, okay. Where's the last tomb that was a... There we go. So now we need to press B. Oh, wait, no. These are actually allowed for burial. Okay, they just haven't actually been used. There we go. So it's all these here. One by one need to be approved for burial. Coffin inspector, coffin inspector, please bring out your coffins. I will expect them, inspect them rather. I will expect to inspect them, and then I shall pass judgment on whether or not they are fit for the corpses of our fallen fellow dwarves. That's how dwarf uh, coffin inspectors talk. I don't know how many you've ever met, but I've met a number of them, and you'll just have to take my word for it that that is exactly what they sound like. And uh, they're not even in place yet. Good lord. Okay. It's getting done. It's getting done. It's good. Actually, it's 6pm in the evening. Not here, it isn't. It's uh, 12.54 on the 17th of the 12th, 2019. 
2019. The average age of this year was 2019. Sorry, <laughs> my mind is falling apart. It gets late, my mind begins to wander. I start to slur my words slightly and then at some point I just suddenly go, right, that's it, bedtime, I'm finished. I've got my mum coming round in the morning to pick me up. I've got to go around her house and wrap Kel's present up after I've been to this appointment. It's going to be a very busy day. Quite the palaver. Oh, and Kel's going to the thing with the car, so I'm going to have to walk to pick the kids up. Ah! <laughs> no! Ah, oh, well, it's only one day of the week, isn't it? And it's their last day of term coming up, so uh, no more school trips for me for a few weeks. Hooray! Ah. Sorry, that was a sigh of satisfaction there, just in case anyone was wondering. Just in case you had any uh, concerns. Hopefully my statement there will alleviate them. Right, let's go up to the surface. They, sh they must have dug the cistern tunnel out by now. I can't see it from the surface. Yes, here we go, all the way down. Question mark? Ushrir Ficodes' corpse? Hang on a second. I'm just going to go over to door therapist and check who this lad is. Okay, he's not one of our top tier miners, so I don't really care. We had 89 adults, we've now got 88. That's fine, that's fine, no problem. We just need to get him into a grave. That would be nice, so we don't have to worry about him uh, haunting us. But we should be okay. Right, why is this not getting dug? What other options do my miners have that are so much more tantalising than this corridor? I really expected this to be done by now. They must have finished the dining hall, right? Not the dining hall, sorry. They've done the graves. They've dug out everything that's enabled or allowed to them for this. So presumably they've got to be making their way off to the, uh, the thingamajig, right? To dig our sister now. Nope, we've got a planter stumbling around obliviously. That's not good. Uh, apparently our best miners currently have no job. That's not what the situation calls for, is it now? Come on, Fortress. Try again. Has this caved in somehow, this tunnel? Is there no way for them to get in or out? I'm going up all the time, aren't I? Let's go down a bit. There we go. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say D-I, pop in a staircase just there. And then fingers crossed no one will get trapped down in that corridor and starve to death, which appears to be what's happened to this poor sod. Ah, well, we'll see. We'll see. Oh, scoundrel. Buttons. Buttons. Have care. I don't see any miners. I do see a guy hauling that... Uh, Calling that anvil around, though. Seems to be a common sight, watching people just running from the river with anvils. What, what is the deal there? Are they using it as some kind of exotic fishing technique? Just dropping anvils into the water and hoping to pin a fish at the bottom of the river? Doesn't feel like it would be effective, to be honest. I don't think so. I don't think it's possible for it to be midnight when it's clearly evening. Where are you, uh, Sinahith? What part of the world are you sitting in currently? Because here in the UK, it is very much two minutes to one in the morning. Two minutes. That's all I can say. Let's have a guess. It's 6 p.m. in the evening, so your back time, you're somewhere in America? Somewhere in America. Or potentially Canada? Canada? Somewhere in Canada. Um, who knows? Obviously you do. Obviously. Unless you don't. Are you? Have you been kidnapped? Are you currently like bound up in some black site prison? With the only thing you're allowed to watch being me? In which case, come on. Come on, US government. Because who else is going to be doing this? Why are you torturing people with my shit? It's not that bad. Jesus Christ. Talk about damning. Good lord. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. It's 7pm. The Sonoran Desert. Ooh. Very interesting. Mm, I don't know how many desert viewers we have. It's not a biome in which my content is widely represented, as far as I know. But who knows? Maybe that's not the case. Maybe I'm uh, popular in the deserts of the world. 
only I'd have known sooner, I would have done more deserty things. Or at least, tried to figure out what deserty things there are to do. <clears throat> uh, mountain time zone. Ah, Sonoran Desert. I believe we've had this discussion before about where the Sonoran Desert is, haven't we? And I even went as far as to look it up. Or is it Sonoran? Sonoran. I'm pretty sure I've heard someone say it as Sonoran before, so we'll stick with that. Okay, how long has it been since the last crash? Should I be working on the next save? Nothing's really happened to speak of. We still only have five idlers. There are a lot of people barreling around this fortress. And a lot of the people running around are basically going outside. I don't know what they're playing at. Oh, hello. More migrants. Let us resume and allow these little chaps on the scene. Uh, where are they coming from? Presumably the top of the map. Oh yes, I see the stream. I see the stream of dwarves charging in. Here they come. It looks like there's quite a few of them. We had 88 adults and 38 children before they arrived. Oh, we've got a melancholic peasant. That's not ideal. It's hard to pull them back up from one of these moods, but fingers crossed, a little bit of smoothing should go some way towards alleviating his misery. No guarantees, but we'll give it a go. It looks like all of them have arrived, so let's give him a chance to get into the fortress. I'm going to do a refresh on the old therapist. We now have 97 adults, and that last migration wave consisted of 13 dwarves, none of whom who have any particularly interesting skills. Oh, tell a lie, we've got a level 15 bone carver, but nah, you know what, don't really care about bone carving. Let's pause the action, have a, have a little look at uh, dwarf therapist, shall we? I'm going to the military screen and I'll take you over there. Are you ready? Are you ready? Brace your eyeballs, we're going to a mostly white screen. There's a good chance it might sting if you're in a dark room. Three, two, one, boom. There we go. So this new lot that have arrived, amongst them we have one single kill, which is a goblin. Nice. Well done, sir. You have won military enlistment. Cool. Congratulations. What a prize. What would you be doing otherwise? Fishing? Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. No, sir, not here. We don't fish here. Even though we've got the river and there's plenty of fish in it. We prefer eggs. We're a big egg fort here. Uh, right. Assigned skilled labours. Wait, didn't someone get captured by a mood and hadn't... Oh shit, I better check to see if we've got a mooded dwarf knocking around still. First, I'll assign these to the lances of gilding. There we go. Both our fisher dwarves off to the lances of gilding. Commit. Um, do we need to name any dwarves after anybody? We'll come back and do that later. Let's get back into the game. And let's quickly look to see if any of our dwarves are currently stricken by moods. Moody, 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 moody. Actually, I can do that through Dwarf Therapist, can't I? Let's have a quick look and see if we've got any mooded dwarves. Don't see anybody jumping out at me. Um... Current job, yeah, whatever. Going down, looking. I don't see any moods. Although it's possible that one of them had a mood and then went mad. Bit of mood madness. We've got a lot of stuff going on in this category. What's this? This is pray. Praying to the volcano god. Well, that's good. That's nice. A little bit of good religion in the fortress. Meditating on minerals, meditating on fire, meditating on metals. Oh, very exciting. Anyway, it doesn't look like we have anyone currently in the middle of a mood, so I don't need to panic. I can calm down. Uh, yep, yeah, we've got egg boxes. Uh, egg boxes? What am I talking about? We've got some uh, turkey nest boxes, or scrotum birds, as I prefer to call them. Um, and they should be churning out absolutely ridiculous numbers of eggs. Let's have a look and see how many we've got. Uh, kitchen, uh, seeds, drinks, meat, fish, other. Cheese, blackball heads, eggs, chimpanzee sweetbreads. It's probably going to be under T for turkey eggs, right? T 
30 tiger meat turkey hen eggs. 72. Not nearly as many as I'd hoped, but uh, it's not too bad, is it? It's not too bad. It's all fine. No need to worry. Okay. Let's put some more spikes down. I'm sure we'll have more spikes by now. Build trap components. Go down to the upright spear spike trap and start banging them in down here. How many have we got? Ashen spikes? Sure. Let's use those. Uh, add another one in there. Could we have some birchen spikes? Sure. Birchen Russell spikes? No, that's a terrible pun. Jesus Christ. Someone will come around punishing me for that one day, I'm sure of it. Uh, D, enter. In goes another set of upright spikes. We've got five willow spikes. Uh, and three of those. One of those. And then one of those should be enough. And then we don't have enough for a full trap left over, so I'll just accept those. Bang. And we'll let it go. Lovely. Man, this trap corridor is going to take much longer to construct than I anticipated. Just the amount of laying down spikes is one thing, but then you have to figure in actually, you know, hooking them up to the bloody levers. Right, that top bridge is in. Is the lever in for it? Hello, lever corridor. Oh, hang on. There we go. Hello, lever corridor. We've got it. Good. So this is for the granite lever, lever, sorry, granite lever. Come on. Try again. What's here? Inner. So that one's the one for the outer. And then presumably this one here. Ah, shit. You see what I've done here? I've beans this badly. I don't know which lever's which. I labelled one for the inner doorway <laughs> so let's say this one we add a new task link up a bridge and then no it's cancel cancel go down to f2 and then we look at this one oh fuck you no what's going on here what ah okay link up a bridge B, B. Aha! Now this one doesn't connect to this one because it can't be. It's already connected. Fantastic. Okay, so F2, the bottom one is the outer lever. So we click on that, that one there, and we name it with Control N. Outer gate go and then the next one here can be control n in uh, in uh, gate oh, gate there we go add a new task build up to bridge uh, we don't want to connect to that one we don't want to connect to that one we don't want to connect to that one but we do want to connect to that one granite mechanisms bingo let's do it now Let's not fuck about. Let's do this one immediately. As quickly as dwarvenly possible. Still not seeing my military train. There's one guy in the barracks, but that's about it. We've actually got three fully kitted out barracks that we could be using, but only one squad of, like, what, now, eight, seven dwarves training? <sighs> it could be done a lot more gracefully and a lot more effectively, but you know what? Who cares, really? As long as the fortress continues and we don't get wiped out, everything will be fine. Apparently we've got a peddler visiting. I don't know why we've got a peddler visiting. I mean, surely we can, we're all fully self-stocked, right? We're all perfectly self-sufficient at this point. Even though I am buying a lot of food. Vutok the boat, the surgeon, is quite upset by the look of things. Maybe we should think about adding a hospital to our, uh, to our fortress. I mean, it's not like we don't have the resources for a hospital. In fact, maybe I should just go down to one of the unused industrial floors and turn that into a hospital? Seems crazy, but I might have to do that. Let's pop some doors on here. There we go. And then we say I to make a zone. Stick that in there. Lovely. And then we make it H, hospital. And we pop in some beds. How does that sound? I think that sounds pretty good, to be honest. Bed, 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 bed. 
bed, bed, bed. Uh, and then we also need a chest, don't we? Is that G? No, it's not G. E? No. Uh, what was a container? Where is it? H. That's what we want. H. And we'll give each of these... Uh, there's a willow chest. There's an ashen chest. There's uh, another bag. We've got a bag. Another ashen chest. How about this one here? Let's have maple chest. And we have a tea wood chest, sure. And we'll have another ashen chest. And then we'll have a willow chest. Why not? <clears throat> what else do we need? Tables, probably. Let's pop some tables in. Again, one for each bed seems to make sense. Table, 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 table. Oh, you little sausage. How dare you. Uh, can we put chairs in? Oops, shit. Build chairs. Everyone gets a chair after their table. Sure. There we go. Okay, we need another table and a chair. That's fine, though. Um, and then beyond that, I think we should be okay for now. We'll just let that get built. We'll just let that get built first. How's our uh, sweet little cistern coming along? Cry, little cistern. Thou shalt not kill. Still not really happening, is it? Why? This is the question I find myself asking. Why? Why are you no dig, huh? It seems like my dwarves just can't get to it for some reason. Surely they can, though. Surely they can get down to that little walkway there, right? There's somebody going there right now. Oh, no, they're just picking up wood. Nobody panic. Nobody get too excited. It's just wood. Have they not actually built this yet? What? Why is there no... It doesn't say stairs, does it? Hmm. Let's... Let's what? Let's make a ramp. I think a ramp's probably a good bet, isn't it? Uh, designate uh, up ramp R. And we'll just pop that there. And we'll pop one there. Bingo. That should let them in. Ah, good. Someone's picked that. That's nice. Somebody could come along and dig it. I would be very pleased. Very pleased in dead. Nobody's coming yet. All very much quiet out here. Although they have been picked, they've been designated as places to dig out, so... Here we go. Here comes a proper miner. One of our good boys. Straight in. And bosh. Now they can access the face. Fantastic. It was all going wrong, but we fixed it. We fixed it so well. Uh, good question. Good question, chaps. And now, obviously, we can get the answer. It's going slowly. Then again, we've got a good miner down here who's rinsing through the face, so maybe it won't take so long after all. Maybe we'll get that sorted before the end of the stream. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I mean, it's on we've only been recording for 2 hours and 22 minutes. Surely that won't produce a file too large to upload to YouTube. It probably won't. It'll be fine. Everything will just be fine. I feel like I want to save, just to make sure we don't lose any progress, but we have been a slave to the saves today. Then again, we have only had one crash that has really given us any kind of grief, so maybe we should be more careful, right? Hmm. 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 Still haven't had that deep dive into the religion of the fortress yet, have we? I should be paying more attention. Just not, though. That's the problem. Oh, Johnny Six is depressed. Not a good sign. Not a good sign at all. How many spikes have we got? Build, trap components, upright spear spikes. Let's pop one. That here. Okay, we've got enough maple spikes for a trap. And then enough ashen and birchen together for another one. But once that's in, I think we're out again. There we go. God, I love this track. Mm -hmm. 
Sorry, getting a little bit carried away with the old humming there. Should try and be a little bit more restrained. Come on, dig my tunnel. Keep it going. Once you get down into that area, we'll be able to breach through and let the water come, and everything will be hunky-dory. I'll be able to make a nice little pond and have all of our little wells come straight down through it. We're going to need some chains, aren't we, I think? Or ropes, at least, to make wells. I'm not entirely sure. I've done it once or twice before, but usually it's one of the things I forget to do. <clears throat> and eventually we all end up dying of thirst in the midst of a siege. Which isn't the end, the worst end to a fortress, but it is a little bit disappointed. You know you really normally, you want to get the candy and find the clowns, right? That's normally the favourite manoeuvre. Ah, come on guys, dig this out. You can do it. You can do this shit. Oh, it's actually quite deep underground. I was thinking maybe I could like channel through and access to this end of the tunnel that would be easier to get to. Turns out, no. Turns out, no. Well, steady on there, chaps. We'll, 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 we'll get to the candy and the clowns later on. There will be a, a feature, provided we're not wiped out before then, but we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Obviously, I would like a little bit of candy outfittery, but I'm not sure there's that much candy on site. We may have to uh, just accept that it's not there. Oh, a silver warhammer's been made, has it? Let's see how many of those are left on order. Ooh, nice. Only six. Quite pleased by that. And start dishing out silver warhammers to our military. Maybe I should make an... Once we've got all ten of them, I'll make a nice squad with uh, silver warhammers. And we'll give that legendary warhammer to the, um, to the squad leader, whoever it turns out to be. Oh, this is nice. We come down the bottom here. Just sort of wait until the miners make their way down. Or well, maybe not. Let's just see what happens. Come on, guys. Diggy, diggy. Okay, they're not making stellar progress. They're being a little bit shit. Come on, you can do it. Y'all can dow it. Sorry, I'm being lulled into a, a sense of drowsiness by the, the music. Got to be careful. Oh, hello. What have we got here? Green zircons. Oh, I thought they were emeralds. Not that green zircons are worthless, but they're not as exciting as emeralds to me. I prefer a bit of emeraldry. Oh, there we go. Excuse me. Got a big old yawn coming on. It's clearly getting too late. Let's have a quick look. How many people are watching? How many disappointees will there be if I finish? 17. That's quite a few. That's a lot of disappointed boys and girls out there. Then again, I, I suppose it's not as disappointing, as many disappointed boys and girls as there would be if I shot Father Christmas or something, you know? So it mustn't be that bad. It can't be that bad. Less bad than the execution of Father Christmas. That's what I can say about this. Let's put some doors in here. Or have I already done the hospital? I have already done the hospital, haven't I? That's no good. Uh, what else does our hospital need? Let's take a little look and check out the hospital information. We've got thread, we've got cloth, we've got splints, we've got crutches, we've got powder for casts, we've got buckets, no soap. Seven beds, six tables, no traction benches. So we need a traction bench being built, so that's fine. I'll put the order in. Uh, J... Um, Q, track, no, okay, interesting, let's try that again, J, M, Q, okay, so now, oh shit, what was I doing, a oh, hospital, that was right, we wanted, um, Christ, I'm on the bike. What was it we wanted? Uh, soap. And traction benches. That was it. Traction benches. Uh, build. No, not build. Uh, JMQ. Let's just type in bench and see what comes up. There we go. Construct traction bench. Can you give me like six of them? There we go. Six traction benches 
should end up being ready to build soon. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Be lovely. We've actually got somebody in the hospital already, and there's somebody here sleeping. The engineer. Oh, isn't that lovely? Erdim the hunter and Fikod the engineer having a little lay down slash snooze in the hospital. Marvellous. Bloody marvellous. So, let's have a look at our little system. How's it going? How's the system going? Is it good? Nearly all the way down. Very nice. I mean, maybe I should take it just a shade deeper than it is. You know what? There's no need. All I've got to do is say dig out from here like that. And then we'll dig out a room like this. A bit big, maybe. How's that? Is that good? Maybe even take that out like that. And that out like that. And then, oh, it's a little bit. If we do it like that, then there's an actual true central square. That one there that we can put the wells over on all the floors above. Does that sound good to everybody? Sounds pretty good to me. That should be all right. Let's do it. Pause. Resume. There we go. Dig out that little room. And then once that's done, we can breach it and let the water in. And we can start channeling above it from uh, the other rooms of the fortress. In fact, it might make sense for me to go upper floor, click like this, and then just make loads of well rooms above, like this. Don't have to go all the way up, I don't. That'll be fine. There we go. What? No, I don't want to set a traffic area. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. I fluffed it. I fluffed it badly. There we go. Designate dig. We go up one floor, go over like that, bang. Right. One more try. Let's go up some floors. Higher even. There we go. Fantastic. We've had a cat mark for slaughter. That's interesting. We get in there. That should all start being dug out relatively soon. I feel like, do we quick save? It's 20 past one in the morning. I've been going for two and a half hours. It might be time to call. I think it is actually, because I have got an appointment I've got to get to tomorrow. So I do need to get up a bit earlier than usual. Although that may open up opportunities for streaming during the day when I get home, but it doesn't seem likely. It's a busy, busy, busy day. Let's stop before it can crash on us again, shall we? Pause. There we go. And then save the game. Brilliant. Now, before you all run and flee to go and find other places to watch, let's go and see if there's anybody I can just raid quickly. We've got 76 people currently watching Dwarf Fortress, so there's probably somebody out there ready for a bit of a raid, right? Maybe. Uh, we've got uh, Mustekalan. Got me, the Scoundrel M. Blind, hang on, let's just raid Blind IRL. He's playing Dwarf Fortress. He's raided me on a number of occasions. Let's go in there and uh, say hi to him. I'll take us back to the home screen. Hey, everybody. how you doing? Uh, I'm just going to type in here, forward slash raid. How do I spell his name? Blind IRL. Blind. Stop it, phone. Actually charge. That would be nice, wouldn't it? IRL. Oh, we need to put a space in there, otherwise it's not going to work. There we go. So if you guys want to prepare. Um, what else do I need to say before I go to bed? Uh, thank you for watching. It's been a genuine pleasure streaming for you. Hopefully you've enjoyed the stream and our paths will cross again at some point. Uh, I have a YouTube channel and a Twitch channel. Just look for the underscore scoundrel underscore M and usually you'll find my stuff. Usually. I mean, I can't think of anyone else who's using this name online. Uh, thanks again. It's been a pleasure. Uh, please enjoy Blind Stream. He's got some fairly well-established fortresses that have been going on for quite some time. So, fingers crossed, you find them as exciting as I do. 
once again mondays and thursdays the the scheduled streams um catch you on one of those days or maybe off schedule bye check out the discord bye Scoundrel! Take that much of the raid! Turn it back with thing! Very much the raid. We just, um. murdered a whole bunch of elves. So, uh, um, we need that. Now we get to clean up now. Pretty glorious. Also, Sockbud has bestowed the name Cool Your, your Gun. Upon a silver warhammer. <laughs>